you on the planet uh, we're back everybody I, I i can't believe it it's happening are you ready i'm not ready no one's ready yeah meg is here this time yes no, because, no that uh, isn't lexi I know yeah people because so many up. of you cannot tell the difference between me and lexi they were like well good enough yeah. meg has joined the spongebob boys i'm here i'm queer and i'm full of fear yeah, as you should be. It's gonna be a long one. It's gonna be a long night. You, you've seen the runtime, and you, you <laughs> want us to suffer. You want long videos to play in the background while you're drawing or gaming or touching yourself. Whatever the hell you do when you listen to Whatever us, you sick little fuck sicko. Do. Welcome to welcome to we berate you. Yeah, this is this ASMR is the, the video degradation yeah. porn. People would pay good money for this. Yeah, they but, would. Um, mm. So, and if you go to the Dying Gentleman Patreon, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> so we call you a stinky oh, little piss boy. We we uh, you. Little pee -pee boy. But, but for context, the in way case, this show... in case you can't tell, in case you can't tell, we have uh we have been joined also by another friend, uh Mr. Kamahal, that being Mr. Al Kamahal. <laughs> Al yeah. I am drinking a pickleback. My good friend Al Chal so, is here. So Meg, which one do you? Yeah. Have? I am drink. I was going to make myself a gin and miskatonic, but I couldn't find the tonic water, so instead I am drinking um ginger ale with. Uh, home infused vanilla vodka. I'm I'm doing the working man's drink. Listen to this. Uh, Ooh, but a young nice Henry's crack. pale lager. Yeah, that is a local Sydney Ooh, beer. There you go. That is named after Henry. They they made it for him. Yeah, when I was younger. But what about you, Garth? We're not sponsored. Oh well, like I said, I'm drinking the pickleback in honor of Bubble Bass because this is the ultimate drink where it's like, eh, no pickles. Well, here they are, and they're in with my it's whiskey. Oops, all pickles. And one, one thing I will say is, just for people who are wondering, yes, what's the situation? Are we fully back with Spongebob Boys? Yes, we are. More back than ever, I'm afraid. Yeah, we, we are we are pickle back. We are pat back. Oh, <laughs> uh, no! That is disturbing. So, yeah, Gus and I are going to be the consistent hosts. A lot of the episodes will probably just be us, but we'll do re uh, sort of rotating guests. We'll have Meg, we'll have Addison, we'll probably have Charlie and Jasper and... Who knows who else? It would be really funny if now that we know Trevor Henderson, we got like Trevor Henderson to come and that guest That would be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> on the SpongeBob boys. So you think what you make is scary. Let me show you some true horror. It's good to be here. It's good to be back. We're SpongeBob boys and you're under attack. Uh, Meg, do you want to start us off with the first episode in our so my roster? my episode was um, season 12, episode three, I believe. It was... Uh... My first one was called uh, The Nitwitting. So that's what you'll be doing first. You'll be you, Gus, me, you, Gus, okay. me, and then we can so, all um, die. Yeah, The, the Nitwitting. Nitwitting. So um, it opens <laughs> in uh, Bargain Mart, where uh, Patrick and... spatula needs. Yeah, where, where Patrick and Spongebob... Um, Spongebob is riding a unicycle blindfolded with Patrick riding on his back. And they are crashing into shit all over the place. And the voice over the intercom is like, Attention shoppers, there is a Spongebob on aisle six. And he just, like, plows through the the, the, the displays. You know, it's a, it's a classic, like, um, Spongebob and Patrick are making their existence everyone else's problem. They've become, like, Dobre Brothers style, like, supermarket fuckery YouTubers. Yeah, they... I, I believe that Patrick and Spongebob would do the lick the ice cream challenge. Yeah! <laughs> I just feel like I just feel like any like unique like uh, retail outlet that SpongeBob and Patrick go to is just suddenly like going to have the worst day of customer service they've ever had. Which is so. it, which sucks because SpongeBob works in in customer service. Yeah, but when he's a customer himself, he has like no regard. Like the magic shop, the like you know the the, the arts and crafts shop, like wherever they go, the, they just uh, cause the like mayhem. So yeah, SpongeBob and Patrick they uh, crash out of the loading bay and they. End end up in just like an area of boxes and spongebob is like hey patrick why'd you blindfold me that's evelyn that's not spongebob what the i i can't i'm, I'm getting rusty you missed the bit where uh, patrick was walking around and going Mugnino, Mugnino. spongebob spongebob and his like tiktok bogan friend patrick yeah. are at this place yeah 
they're not they're not they're not they they're american don't call them tiktok bogans <laughs> we we don't claim those Fair assholes enough. they're american and they're in america <laughs> sorry yes, um continue. yeah so spongebob and uh patrick they're in this like just kind of like dead air like like empty space full of cardboard boxes out the back of the loading bay of the bargain mine and um spongebob is like hey patrick why did you blindfold me and patrick goes because i didn't want you to get anything in your eyes and then he opens his eyes and there's just like a bunch of shit in his eyes like a dead bug and like and then he pulls he has like a um like a worm or something and he pulls it out like a ripcord and his eye spins around and a bone comes out oh what what the the fuck i hate that yeah very so um then he walks up to this box that's uh, that says clubhouse on it with like a shittily drawn little uh, door on it. And he goes, this is my club meeting. And Spongebob goes, can I join the club? And Patrick is like, sure. Sure you can. Anyone can join. It's exclusive. Patrick Dom, he don't know what that word mean. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> him brain very him small. Him brain so small. So um, basically he... They go into this cardboard box, and on the inside, it's like it's bigger on the inside. Whatever, it's a cartoon, but um, it's a club of dumb people. It's a club of dumb people <laughs> called the um. It's called the Empty Heads Society. Mensa but opposite. Yeah, what if Mensa but opposite? Oh, uh, and so, I I I love this. So that you, when you, I love that Patrick has connections to the stupid community. Yeah, he's he's a proud member of the idiot community of Bikini mm. Bottom. These idiots are, you know, just kind of like gibbering and rolling on the floor and hitting themselves with hammers. You know how stupid people do in cartoons. Classic idiocracy stuff. Yeah, and Patrick is like, you gotta check your th- your thinky guy at the door and spongebob's like all right and he rips his brain out of his skull why does spongebob have bones <laughs> i hate it oh, i don't understand why spongebob has bones this is something that has annoyed me since i was a child why does spongebob have bones that's so upsetting i don't want to think they about call him, him an bones. invertebrate in multiple episodes yeah. but they also show him to have a skeleton he doesn't have any bones like he shouldn't have any bones and whole- yet he does have bones and he pulls his brain out, and he hands it to the coach. He's check. got Schrodinger's bones. Like, when Flats is punching him to break his bones, he don't have bones. But when he needs bones for a gag, he has yeah, bones. Yeah, I mean, I guess what it is fuck? a cartoon. I shouldn't be mad, but I am. Uh, so he checks his brain at the door, and then and then they uh, they announce the meeting is beginning by a guy dropping a cinder block on his foot and hollering really loud. And then they take the minutes, where they're just saying minutes a lot. Um, <laughs> this, this, this whole thing just feels like fucking like it would be the SpongeBob version of like titty cut follies. Any of those things where there's like someone doing like a secret documentary recording of like a 1950s insane asylum. Yeah, pretty and much. And all the like horrible conditions. Pretty much. There's like right. all of these, and there's another Patrick. There's like another character that looks like Patrick, but he's got like he's got some shit on him, and <laughs> he looks like he's wearing I got a... too much fucking shit on me. <laughs> Oh my god! So uh, wait, I'm just picturing like fucking overdesigned Patrick, Pretty like much. <laughs> just has been hotel Patrick. I don't know. He's got like red spots or whatever. He looks like he's, he's wearing an ice cream cone for pants. He's he's asymmetrical. He's very red. He's got no like, Patrick a top is too hat. fat to tone up in has been hotel. No, Vivian Madrano yeah. doesn't like fat people. Oh, he'd tur- he <laughs> he'd turn up and turn out. He'd change that entire world. Yeah. So, so what was um, next? So then they uh, they have like their they have the opening. Um, I think they sing a little song. Uh, my brain was just wiped by the scene where they pass a jar around and everybody has to spit in it. Oh <laughs> no! No! And then Stop. when SpongeBob takes the jar, everybody starts chanting, "Drink, drink, drink!" I, I don't. Here's no, SpongeBob. Come on. He's true blue. He's a piss pot through and through. He's a bastard, so they say. He tried to get to have him, but he went the other way. He went down, down, down. I am so he drinks, he drinks it. But then they're like, no, we meant the lemonade. And there's like a lemonade stand behind him. And the, the guy who is in charge uh. of the club goes, but that was so stupid what you just did that you earn a stupid club merit badge. And he takes a piece of gum out from um, a cavity in one of his teeth, and he sticks it on SpongeBob's oh, body. 
it, this is bad. This sounds fucking revolting. It is. I never thought we'd. I never thought we'd see the day that bad Newell stars would be a concept in SpongeBob. Yeah. yeah. But that's what this feels like. Then it is. They sing a little. They sing their club song again. I think. Their and little idiot song. Their little idiot song. Well, that was a little idiot. <laughs> their little moron song. <laughs> um. They just go. They just go. Google gobble. Google gobble. gobble one, one, one of us. us one, one of us. us. So they're like, now it's time to do our monthly community outreach. I'm so scared of. And they get on these oh, tiny no. little boats, and they're just like riding these tiny little boats around town, and then they do stuff that like I know you guys have complained about this before, but like in bad cartoons, stupid characters are just like wanton agents of chaos. They're just evil. To yeah, people around them. it's like they yeah, do with yeah, no, they're malicious no sense, by my no nature. Purpose. Other than to create misery in the world. And that's what this whole sequence is. This is just an extended bit of, like, they're knocking the ends off of parking meters and replacing them with bowls of pea soup. Wait, they're out of the weird, they're out of the weird, like, TARDIS. Yeah, they're out of that. Uh, They're out in Bikini Bottom now. And everybody sees them coming and runs away. And there's one funny joke. And it's uh, the hot dog vendor. You know how there's the hot dog vendor in SpongeBob? He's one of the, like, Mm. Bikini Bottom locals. Um, he sees the, 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 uh, Empty Head Society, and he, um, pulls out a string of sausages, like, puts it around the front of the hot dog cart, like, uh, like a bit on a horse, and then the hot dog cart rears up and neighs, like, Silver, the, the Lone Ranger, and he rides off into the sunset, away from the, the stupid people. And I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> That's what I wish I could do to get away from this episode. Yeah, just ride a hot dog cart into the sunset like the Lone Ranger. That is, that's just a good visual gag. Yeah. Like, I can imagine that. That sounds actually really funny. So now they're to just, just doing, like, else. they're doing, like, cartoon dumb people shtick. Like, they go to the bowling alley and they go, oh, mister, you dropped your ball. And they chuck the ball back at the guy's face and it, it like, smashes into his face. These do just feel like those, like, chaotic prank YouTubers. Yeah, pretty who much. Who just make trouble for people. Yeah, and, and there's the one joke. part where they're, like, they're, they ride a ride on mower on the footpath and it, like, cuts it up and, like, removes all of the paving. This is me- Menino Nyohoi Minyoi yeah. is what this is. Menino Minyoi. Yeah. The language is evolving. <laughs> Soon they'll have space travel. Like, Patrick is, like, throwing the contents of, like, the, the bins on the street out into the uh, out onto the street and saying, why would people put smelly garbage in these lovely bins? And he's throwing them out, and SpongeBob goes, Maybe they didn't have any room in their pockets. And then the other Patrick, the, like, head of the society, the Patrick with shit on him, is like, hmm, that seems like too logical a thought. Maybe you're not empty head material. And SpongeBob gets really sad. And uh, so what he does is he opens up his head and he pours a, um, he pours water on his brainstem to short it out and so he can become fully stupid. This is a nightmare. You know, <laughs> so he can become comfortably dumb? Yeah. He has become... <laughs> Comfortably Become dumb. Comfortably dumb. What this feels like is that at the end, we're going to find out that, like, leader Patrick is in Patrick's head. And it's like a Tyler Fight Club, then. like, Project Mayhem situation. Spoilers for Fight Club. No, yeah, this this all sounds like either that or, like, Spongebob, while they were unicycling around, like, hit his head. And this these are, like, his coma thoughts yeah. be before he goes completely brain dead. And the morons doing terrorism across So town. they basically yeah. are doing terrorism, but <laughs> yeah. Spongebob yeah, has... It's, yeah, it's Project Mayhem, but dumber. <laughs> Spongebob has become fully stupid, and then he gets lost. But he doesn't know how to ask for directions. Like, he goes up to a woman at the bus stop, and he's just like, I am a lost little girl. Duh. And the woman hits him and goes, weirdo, <laughs> and runs away. And then he's like, oh, no, I'm I'm even more lost to row. And so he ends up in, like, the, the, the back alley with all the trash in it, and he finds an old armchair, and he tries to sit on it, and he can't sit. Uh, SpongeBob is gay. Um evidence point up uh, uh, evidence point number uh, number 25 spongebob doesn't know how to sit he is gay like kind of flops around and is like i can't remember how to sit and then patrick goes up with a brain a jar full of brains and is like oh hi spongebob i'm gonna give you your brain back and he's going through all the brains in the jars because he doesn't remember which one is his even though there's a giant like uh well giant compared to the other brains in the jar they're all very small because they belong to the dumb people. But SpongeBob's brain looks like, I don't know, normal. Begging the question why they would need to get rid of them in the it's first square. place. His brain is square, but he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know which one's mine. So he's trying out all these brains, and then 
He puts the square one in, and it kind of sticks, but it doesn't go back in, so Patrick starts beating the shit out of him. Of course. I think Patrick just likes doing Oh my doing god. That. He just likes kicking the shit out Spongebob of him. SpongeBob just gets the absolute shit beaten out of him by Patrick, because he's like, if I knock you enough times, the, the brain will go back in properly. So it's like the, the whole classic, like, Patrick, like, body checks him, and his, like, eyes pop out, and there's, like, an elephant sound effect. You know how it is in yeah, cartoons. of course. Right, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then Patrick says, okay, I think it's back in. Now you gotta say, I'm ready. And, and Spongebob goes, spaghetti! And Patrick beats the shit out of him some more. And then finally Spongebob says, I'm ready. And then he's like, oh, thank goodness, I, I'm not dumb anymore. My brain works again. I gotta go clean up the mess that all the dumb people made. By the way, the, the, the community outreach that they did, that was the nitwitting. That's why the episode is called that. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. And okay. then he goes and tries to clean it up, but then he finds out that Sandy already did it because Sandy is in the clean up after the Nitwits society. And it, I don't remember what the exact acronym was, but it looked a lot like FEMA. <laughs> the world building like on this one is off the charts. Fixing Empty Head Mistakes Alliance. So it was like FEMA with an H. This is getting some weird territory. Yeah. It's like all the right wing conspiracies. Like, oh, Sandy's gonna put SpongeBob and Patrick in the theme accounts. This, this is this is like one step away from like Sandy being in Atlas Shrugged, the SpongeBob version. She basically is. Was, Sandy strikes me as a libertarian. I was gonna say this whole thing is like a reverse <laughs> flowers for Algernon, but then I remembered that SpongeBob literally kind of did flowers for Algernon in the episode where Patrick became really smart, and then he like became like alienated from everyone around yeah. him because of his intelligence then in the end he like redumbs himself yeah. to fit back in so how does it end so it just ends with the um spongebob and sandy are like oh no the idiots are coming back so they dive into a garbage bin for safety and then all of the idiots come in on their mini boat singing their dumb dumb song and then patrick crashes into the screen and breaks it and that's the end of the episode, this episode just feels like it would be ableist watching yeah. it it feels like you'd watch yeah. this and be like, ah, oh, this is uncomfortable. In, in like Gus said, the exact way that watching Idiocracy is very uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's a good thing that my next episode has nothing ableist about it. Anyway, the title is Salsa Imbasilicus. No! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Already I'm afraid. So Salsa Imbasilicus. So this is something that we didn't do for Meg's first one, but it's a new tradition we're starting. Each time someone says the title... Uh, another person there has to try and guess what they think the episode will okay, be. So, Meg, um, what do you think? I yeah, think I want you both to be guess. That, um, that either that the the Krusty Krab puts salsa on their burgers and it's too hot, and that results in shenanigans, or SpongeBob and Patrick take a salsa dancing class, probably with Squidward, probably with Squidward, and they um Ruin will make Squidward life. want to kill himself. Yeah. So, what do we? What is it, Gus? <laughs> I would much rather have watched either of those ideas. This is an episode which begins with Plankton failing to take the formula again. And he is kicked out of the Krusty Krab by Mr. Krabs. And he lands at like Sandy's foot. And Sandy's all like, ah, Plankton, you're, you, you know, you, you tried to get the Krabby Patty secret formula, but you failed once again. The only way Krabs would let you get the formula is if he were as dumb as Patrick. So is this another like, oh, let's... Let's lobotomize crabs type thing. In I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> well, why do we keep this? Is another it? this is another let's play with the with the concept of intelligence and essentializing the stupid. And person. have you noticed that any time that like Sandy gets involved in like the burger wars, she always does some like fucking <laughs> squ Texan squirrel mangala shit. <laughs> like evil yeah, that's science the thing. is that's everything the thing. else. Yeah, Sandy is always like violating the Geneva Convention in these episodes. It's so true. That's why she can't live on the surface anymore. Yeah, she got exiled. She got exiled. She's gonna be hanged at Nuremberg, a tiny squirrel gallows it, with yeah. a war cry. <laughs> oh my! With a normal sized, normal sized executioner, just kind of yeah, like just like a tiny lever. She was what was known as a soldier squirrel in SS. Oh no! Oh my god. 
So, okay, so we've now created the, like, fucking Operation Paperclip Sandy theory. We cannot use that as the art. Do no, not ask me no, to draw no, that. Do not no, ask me to no, that, no. Boys. So, so here's the thing. Sandy this time is not involved in the actual concoction of the atrocity. Plankton himself takes that idea and decides, like, okay, I am going to create a, like, idiot sauce <laughs> from Patrick's, like, DNA, I say, be careful, then, when you're from Patrick's meaningful terrifying pause <laughs> <laughs> now, okay i we'll get to it uh, so, pl- no so plankton so plankton gets in a canoe and he like he rows up a river of drool into patrick's rock house and into patrick's mouth because patrick was producing the river of drool as he was asleep i want to kill myself so what happens next? <laughs> so Plankton goes into Patrick's mouth. He he has to, like, swab a sample uh, with the Q-tip he was using to row the boat. And so he, he collects a sample from Patrick's uh, mouth. And meanwhile, Patrick's tongue decides to fight back. And, and Plankton is, like, you know, trying to fend it off with the Q-tip. But, like, the tongue turns him around and licks his, like, weirdly defined wait, butt cheeks. Wait, isn't this that thing that everyone edits to make it look like, uh, fucking Mr. Krabs licking Plankton's ass with yes. the daddy, yes, yes. edited over it? Yes, yes. Yes, we have the no, that's what it is. That's what this is from. Exactly. It's from this episode, Salsa in Basilica, sis. Uh, 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 Basilicus. This is why this exists. This then, one. For that edit. Plankton manages to get out of Patrick's mouth and go back to the chum bucket, and he is now cooking up a, a, a magical sauce, the idiot sauce, also known as the salsa in Basilicus. He has a little bit of Patrick's saliva, which is depicted as completely white and has a little Patrick face Patrick's on it that just goes, saliva. Duh. Yeah. Is <laughs> completely white. His saliva. saliva. <laughs> Full scare quotes, emphasis on scare. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, Karen is here and she's like, Plankton, this is like really dumb. You're a bad cook. This isn't going to work out. And every time, like, Plankton kind of, like, snaps back at her, she plays a laugh track to, like, further humiliate him and drive in the point. And at one point, he, she's got, like, it's funny, uh, marriage a black is and terrible. white crowd of people. But her aim is getting <laughs> better. Is getting exactly. better. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's so funny, too, because, like, every time they show, like, Plankton and Karen's relationship, it's like, you built this woman... Why is she, like, the worst See, that's why you? the superior version of Plankton and Karen is from the musical, where they're, like, making out with each other constantly on stage. Yeah, just very passionate. <laughs> yeah, they're like the Morticia and Gomez. Exactly. The, Spon- the Spongebob universe in that musical. Honestly, like, villains in an abusive relationship broke. Villains in, like, a very passionate relationship yes. where they're just horrible to everyone yes. else. Woke. Yes, we need to get some of that uh that Lord and Lady Buxton from RRR sauce. Yeah. They're just two fucked up people who love each other a lot but are fucked up. Yeah. And I've been I've been watching a lot of the the Venture Bros recently and getting into it and the Monarch and Dr. Girlfriend, and, uh, Doctor yes. F- girlfriend Dr. yeah. Girlfriend, and then Dr. Mrs. the Monarch. Yeah. Dr. Oh, Mrs. Really the good. Monarch. But this is not what happens with uh with uh Plankton and Karen because Karen is muted by Plankton because he has a remote. To mute don't you his wish wife. you could do that, <laughs> fellas, eh? <laughs> hey, I don't get I don't get no respect, <laughs> yeah. ah, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> oh! I don't get no respect. Whoa! I built this woman and still she plays a laugh track when I say shit. Waka waka! Oh, we're all just afraid of this salsa. Continue. So so the salsa uh splashes on Plankton because he turns out he is an idiot, and the nagging woman did have a complete point, and the and the and the man married to the nagging woman is also a complete idiot. So it's just a world of idiots. Um and he becomes more of an idiot because he's sprayed with the, 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 the salsa. He becomes dumb. He grows a little bump on his head. And then the fumes go out of the chum bucket and are absorbed by a rain cloud. Which, don't ask why there's a rain cloud Underwater, in, in the yeah. ocean. There's a return of the don't, living Don't dead ask about Oh my god, yes. Down. Yeah. <laughs> so the rain cloud goes over the town and then it pours down, and you hear a bunch of just, like, idiot gibbering coming from Bikini Bottom. 
I bet, like, we, if we looked into this, and people in the comments, let us know if this is the case. Look into it for us, because you're in the future. It seems like something the CIA would try to do. True, definitely. <laughs> but I was going to say... <laughs> what yeah. if we just yeah, made dampening, the Russians dampening dumb rain. Yeah. with our dumb rain? Yeah. <laughs> what I was thinking yeah. is, I bet, like, intelligence regression is some sort of fetish. Yeah, bimbofication. Yeah. No, exactly. He, he blanked bimbo bimbofies. <laughs> Bikini bottle. He found the <laughs> The milk what makes you a bimbo. Yeah. I've also heard the term mind break, and I don't know if it's the same thing, but it seems related. Mind break is a terrifying. Is that a fetish? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. It sounds like it'd be the fetish of, like, I don't know, like, like, that, 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 yeah, like Makama or like that guy. You know that one in, uh, in X2? who is, like, in the wheelchair, and his whole thing is just, like, mind-fucking people. Yes. The, like, evil uh, general's the son. Kid. From what I can gather, it's just, like, somebody's brain is broken and, like, can't recover. Like, an event just causes them to become an These idiot These are all forever. the people who want to, like, fuck Vecna from Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> I want someone who will mentally torture me until my mind... It's, it's fucking, um... Massive spoiler, skip on his head. Stem the, I just needed his mind to break. And then it broke. Some people just come to buckets at that ending of Upgrade. So Gus, what happens after the bimbification shower? Yeah, so Sandy wakes up the next morning and because she was inside of her tree dome, she wasn't affected by it. But she walks out and everybody is now as dumb as Patrick. Literally, she's doing an idiocracy right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, this is literally Sandy in idiocracy because everybody's like running at the stop signs, like wearing traffic cones. They're all just like, they've all got like big buck teeth and like bump heads and they're all being really stupid squidward too uh he has made his house into a clown for some reason it has a big rainbow fro and a, like a red nose on it silly. it's a similar vibe to remember that episode where plankton made like baby gas that turned people into babies <laughs> fuck you for everyone. reminding me of that but yes it's similar <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like, like, a, like a lot of Nickelodeon shows, this just exists as like an outlet for the various depraved fetishes of its creators. Steve Marmel muscle yeah. cock so, moments. So just be like, why would you even go into animation if it wasn't just to satisfy deeply unactionable fetishes? Anyway, sorry, exactly. So, so idiot Squidward is like, ha, ha, I have the best taste in town. <laughs> And Sandy tries to, like, reason with him, but he runs back into his clown house. Uh, there's a guy doing, like, motorcycle donuts on the ground, like, in the earth. Um, SpongeBob is trying to make Krabby Patties out of, like, rocks. It's very bad. It was like, like a SpongeBob everything... version of, like, the sadness. Yeah, this is the SpongeBob <laughs> version of that town that got duped with LSD back yeah. in the war. Yeah, like, everybody, like, it's so fucked up. Like, nobody is competent. And even Patrick is, like, unusually stupid in this. Like, he can't even, like, be a character when Sandy tries to ask him what's going on. He should be immune to it because yeah, it's, it's his... his... It's it's his jism. Yeah. By this episode's logic, he was exactly as dumb as the exaggerated dumb people in this episode. So like he can't have agency or help out in any way. Yeah, it would have actually been interesting if it was like Patrick was like, Patrick, you're now someone of average intelligence. You can help me. So anyway, uh, as a result of this, everybody's lined up at the chum bucket because that makes perfect sense. Uh, Sandy has this line about how like, Oh, I should have expected this. The chum bucket is ground zero for zeros. Zero being everyone's collective IQ. Sandy is a libertarian. Yeah, Sandy does have like these... <laughs> Sandy just like slips every so often and like drops into like a German accent then quickly goes back to Texan. <laughs> but like... <laughs> I'm just thinking of yeah, like... I'm a, I thing. am an American. I am from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, American voters. We love for Johnny Baseball. Yeah, no. It's, it's like... Um, Mickey the Mouse. It's, it's the same problem that, like, Steamboat has Willy. of just, like, yeah, stupid people, like, actively, like, bad things yeah. against their interests. Yeah. yeah, no, they they're just they're just a lifestyle choice, it's really. Just, stupid people just enjoy pain happening to them they like tasting bad things like this is how like the kind of people that like believe in iq think 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So so as I mentioned before, Plankton is already stupid. Uh, Karen's immune because she's a freaking robot. So Sandy goes oh into the God. chum bucket, girl meets up with Karen. Moment. Yeah, girl boss team up. Girls get it done. They're going to save the Men. world. Stupid girls. When smart. men, I am I right? <laughs> so anyway, they like decide to team up, and they decide that like the first person they're gonna fix is Plankton, uh, who is so like cantankerously stupid that he's fighting with his own reflection. Like he sees a metal surface, and he's like, "No, me, Plankton, not you!" Ah! And he's like trying to beat up the wall. Is there just something oddly disturbing about all of this? Yeah. Well, again, again, it's because like this is like really, it's trying to create an archetype of the essential stupid person that like has no bearing on like anything in reality. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like the, the archetype of the like essential stupid person appears to be almost kind of like <laughs> advanced psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it always devolves into some kind of like weird ableist like proclamation. Like, like it, it's straight up like what it actually makes me think of is, I don't know if you've seen this class, but mate, like at like the beginning of the crazies, yes. when all of the infected people, they aren't like fully violent yet, but they're just starting to act in like very like off ways that yes. like makes them seem kind of brain damaged. It feels like this is going to become, like, if it was made for adults, it would slowly, like, curdle into some, like, violent, crossed-esque nightmare. Where everybody's just, like, fucking each other and throwing each other off cliffs. Yeah, because it's like, oh, they're just yeah. violent cavemans now who get pleasure from pain. Exactly. So, so in order to try and reverse this uh, process, Sandy and, and Karen are like, okay, well, maybe we'll feed him something that smart people eat. What do you eat, Sandy? And Sandy goes, oh, we'll feed him nuts. <laughs> These nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! We saw a trailer for a movie called Argonauts yesterday while waiting to get. Shut up! While waiting Shut to the get fuck a up! Boost. Shut the fuck up! Sorry, tell us about the peanuts in Patrick. Wow, well, they shoved their they... peanuts into Patrick. No, not they shove the peanuts into plankton. So plankton's just he's he's so full of nuts, his mouth's full of nuts. <laughs> and it's not I'm imagining it and it's bad. It doesn't do anything. Like he's got like the little like like lumpy bulges in his side stomach that he's got like peanuts in. And it's like they're the smart ones. How did they not know this? They don't know um, that shoving peanuts into someone's mouth won't increase it. I mean, I guess circus elephants. But they don't eat peanuts <laughs> in the wild. Sure, Not because don't. of the peanuts. You're right. I just no, have a they eat like I think they eat grass. Maybe there was some salsa and basilica in this lager. <laughs> I think that's just yeah. the alcohol. Yeah, lager is the real salsa and basilica. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I think I'll... I think we gotta consult like if we know an elephant expert. I'm not gonna name any names, but yeah. if we know an elephant expert, <laughs> we should <laughs> probably consult them. He has mixed feelings on us, though. Yeah, come on, anyway. you know yeah, who you true. are. It's true. Yeah, will an elephant expert please stand up in the comment? Comment down below if you're an elephant expert. <laughs> Only one of you is allowed to do this. Yeah, we you, we know who. So anyway, uh, the other thing they do in order to make Plankton smart is that uh, they verbally uh, insult him. They verbally make him... Uh, try to become smarter. They say, like, hey, idiot, no things. Hey, idiot, you're so stupid. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching this as Karen and Sandy, uh, like, trade turns uh, giving injuries, or, sorry, giving insults towards the screen. Like, POV, you're being insulted by Sandy and Karen. This is another fetish thing. God damn it. Oh, my God. I couldn't help but feel, I couldn't help but feel like, oh, God. Like, am I, what am I supposed to take from this? <laughs> am I the little pee-pee piss boy? Also, just the yeah, idea am that, I, yeah. Am I the little pee-pee piss boy that is being, uh, like, a like a squirrel and a robot are yelling at? Yeah. Well, just the thing ASMR. of, like, if, if this is, like, the, oh, yeah, this will <laughs> yeah. be what makes him smarter. Whoa. Like fucking Karen and Sandy, like the architects behind like Bush's No Child Left Behind, like school initiative. Yes. Of just, I think berating <laughs> the children will help. I think punishing them for being dumb. Okay, so then, uh, so then they decide to stop doing shtick and decide to get real systemic about this. Decide to take like a, a real, like solid approach to doing this. <laughs> they they decide to open a university, which everybody in Bikini Bottom will now attend. Cheeks University. It's like Bikini Bottom University, but close enough. 
Uh, at first, nobody wants to go in, but then Sandy, like, pulls this rope, which rings in, like, a bell tower some jangling keys, and that draws everybody into Karen and Sandy's, like, And then, they, and then I assume they get, like, Levitico treatmented with, like, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's even dumber than that, because they're taught how to, like, wear pants and, like, eat food out of a bowl. This that is, is a- what you pay uh, $4,000 a year to learn at university. This is just ableism the episode. Like, I'm gonna be completely honest. This is the funniest thing that these kind of universities would satisfy those types of dipshits. So, like, why don't you teach us things we can actually use? After, after ableism school, after the, like, we're going to teach you how to become smarter people, uh, happens, everybody is, like, is going to pass, except for Plankton, who has devolved into like a Billy Loomer style bully wearing a leather jacket. And like, he's bullying Mr. Krabs. Like, Oh, I know you're trying to make something in home ec and I, and I want it because uh Krabs has been uh reverse Algernon and he doesn't know about the Krabby Patty secret formula, but he's been slowly figuring it out again. This is, you know what this is making me think of Whoa. that one trope of tales that we did that was like, Half of the school thinks of me as a yeah a genius. as a genius yeah. sociopath, and the other half thinks of me as a little bit slow. Big and we were dumb like, idiot. What class does he take with the people who think he's a psychopath? <laughs> yeah, we're like a home egg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It also just feels insane to me that all of this shit has happened in 11 minutes. That's Very the good. bizarre thing. It's like, I was like, okay, I got to just keep taking notes because some of these modern SpongeBob episodes are just, they're going to do a gag for like, for like seven minutes. And then the rest of it's just the setup and payoff, quote unquote payoff. No, this so is true. just like, again, just a sequence of like weird new additions to it. And so, Plankton's trying to get Mr. Krabs' uh, formula. He apparently shoved SpongeBob into a locker. Uh, Patrick's the janitor. And all of this is made more surreal by the fact that everyone is still doing idiot voice. Oh, no. no. That must have been yeah. a fun day at the recording studio. I had a lot of that in my episode, so I sympathize with you guys. It's very not good. Like, Plankton, as bully, like, he put school is dumb and graffiti on the wall, and Mr. Krabs is just like, you know that all those words are misspelled. And it's like, okay, come on. Yeah, it's like, why are you making Commenters Clotsy Brown internet. do this? Yeah, exactly. He was in Pet Cemetery 2, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Give the man the respect he deserved. Exactly. So, so anyway, it's graduation day now, and everybody is outside, like all the incidental people. Uh, Sandy and Karen are giving people their diplomas. Meanwhile, uh, Mr. Krabs is in the, like, home ec food lab, and he figures out the Krabby Patty secret formula. Like, he manages to recreate it in his brain. But Plankton busts in and starts, like, starts bullying Mr. Krabs into giving up the formula. Oh, yeah, because that was what this was about. I forgot. Exactly. It's a Plankton episode. (laughs) So SpongeBob uh, is given his diploma, and the second he receives it, he suddenly, like, regains his voice and, like, average intelligence, and he's like, oh, no, Plankton's gonna steal the formula from Mr. Krabs. So he runs with Mr. Krabs' diploma to the lab and throws the diploma into Mr. Krabs' hand, and the second that diploma touches Mr. Krabs' hand, he also regains his intelligence. I wish that was how it worked in real life. I've got two degrees, and I'm still dumb as shit. Oh, no. (laughs) But that's the thing. Plankton is, like, shocked by that, too. He's like, I wish that's how it worked. I would have ordered a diploma from now on. And then Mr. Krabs says, ha, I was actually punking you. I took accelerated classes and graduated last week. I'm already there. And Plankton goes, this is such a stupid twist. Why is this the way that it is, God? Get ready for the third twist because Plankton says, but wait, no, you were scared of me. You were about to give me the formula. And then uh, a a two-way window uh, lights up that, that was into the lab. And Sandy comes in and goes, congratulations on your acting class, Mr. Krabs. You passed that one too. Which, okay, if Mr. Krabs accelerate, uh, like did accelerated classes and had already graduated, why is he still getting credits from an unresolved <laughs> class? Yeah. I because, don't know. Because this is some like Trump University-esque scam to take advantage of people whose minds were like chemically altered when they signed up. Exactly. Exactly. And who knows how much profit Sandy has reaped from this, from, from like everyone getting dumbed down and Sandy creating a bullshit putting on pants curriculum. 
This whole thing is actually just Sandy is experimenting on all of them. We were right all along. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is, she's like, these are sea creatures. They're not really sentient or worthy of, like, the <laughs> dignity of life. These are not like me. They're they're an outgroup. I can do whatever I want to them. Don't and there's worry, no consequence. It's just the air escaping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... So anyway, uh, uh, Krabs, like, you know, he reveals that he's been smart the whole time. Plankton remains dumb, and Mr. Krabs throws him out onto Karen, who is playing the laugh track again with the, like, cloud of, uh, cr- uh, the crowd of, like, black and white people. And she goes, like, oh, well, it's time to begin your post-college days. And idiot Plankton just kind of moans and groans. And that's how the episode ends. Thank you. I hated that. What, what a bizarre, Thank miserable you so much, experience. Gus. I want to kill you. Yeah. I just want to remind you guys of just one thing before we go on to the next episode, Henry's first one, is that Plankton is the only person who went to college out of the main cast. Yeah, he and makes so, a point that he went I to went college. to college! That was a joke that he yes, used to it's do. Yes, very, it's very bizarre that he can't seem to do it twice. But then again, I guess he can't do it with the intelligence of Patrick, proving for once and for all that IQ is real and not a pseudoscience. God damn, this is really this SpongeBob enters was, his Nazi era. This, this episode was great. Yeah. Sponge, Sponge Genix. You God. Bob Genix pants. <laughs> Which leads me on to my episode, which thankfully has nothing to do with intelligence. Though really, most SpongeBob episodes have nothing to do with intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> most modern SpongeBob episodes don't. You're right. So, you <laughs> neither does this show, for that matter. Yeah. No. I'll give you the title of this. It's called Squid Noir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In- instantly having flashbacks to that one episode of Echo Chamber. Yeah. One prediction. It's all in black and white, and Squidward's a hard-boiled detective. So here's the thing. That would make sense. But because this is a modern SpongeBob episode, that doesn't start to happen until after several minutes. So, art thou ready? No. (laughs) I am not feeling it now. Okay. So, the episode begins with... feeling like a total barnacle barnacle head! head. See, you can't enjoy that episode legally anywhere now. They couldn't um, make that episode today. Couldn't make that episode today, yeah. All right, so... Mr. Cancelled. We begin on... Squidward's about to be Mr. Cancelled. Because... He is practicing his clarinet in the Krusty Krab. So it's a Krusty Krab beginning. Never a good sign. Always a bad sign. Yeah. It's yeah, a bad exactly. thing to come in. That's the one it's thing role. John Enter has been right about in his entire career. This, this I, I think this show needed a little bit more 9-11. That's what oh, I think. Yeah. It really takes me out of the moment that SpongeBob never, like, tearfully says, never forget while silhouetting. Well, not silhouetting, saluting. I've had beer. Why do we care about a couple of dumb buildings? Well, this, SpongeBob, they rare. hit the second tower! <laughs> <laughs> no! They hit the second tower, SpongeBob! <laughs> SpongeBob! I get, 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 did somebody say loose change? <laughs> I think I think the CIA did it. Yeah. <laughs> Cut the squid with having hanged himself. <laughs> <laughs> with like an orange in his mouth. Anyway. Holy so, shit. So it begins with Squidward. <laughs> Only on SpongeBob boys. <laughs> Only on. Make the worst <laughs> I love how much, I love how many scenarios we come up with that absolutely cannot in no world be the thumbnail art. No, it's This so is not tr- a place of honor. Yeah, nothing. Nothing valuable is buried here. <laughs> this is an unspeakable place. It's so true. All right, so Bubbud <laughs> is preparing for a, like, jazz open mic. So he's playing clarinet at the counter. And um, the patrons of the Krusty Krab find this somewhat distasteful. So much so that the first guy, like, screams until, like, human ears pop out the side of his head. At which point, he rips out his eyes and stuffs them in his ears. Oh, my friend, smiles. my friend, uh, my friend Sana did one of her animations for our master's class. She did an animation of herself doing that. And it was called Misophonia. <laughs> and now it's in Spongebob. <laughs> and now it's in Spongebob. Mm. She should sue. Yeah, she should. She might have some money there. Another guy, um, I'm trying to remember what he even did. He he just got really angry and destroyed something. I can't remember <laughs> what. 
I'm sure that was somebody else's animation assignment that they just ripped off yeah. and put into the SpongeBob episode. They just were sitting in the back of the classroom at uh, University of Hertfordshire the entire time I was there, just like making notes, stealing shit. The next next episode we watch, they're gonna get killed by Christmas decorations. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Krabs approaches Squidward and, and like hits him, causing his clarinet to go back into his head and contort it in a freakish fashion, as expected. Classic SpongeBob joke, like you do. Yeah. So mm-hmm. classic bit. Naturally. So, Mr. Krabs is, like, uh, you know, Squidward is doing the whole, like, oh, this is for art, I've got a jazz open mic, and I'm gonna, like, change people's lives. I'm gonna do real shit, like, <laughs> putting a weasel's head on a duck, and then I'm gonna kill, and then kill myself! <laughs> Please watch the taxidermia video, you haven't? It's fucking hilarious. Mr. Krabs says, this is a jazz-free zone, and gestures over to a sign that is, like, a red X through, like, a black silhouette of a clarinet. Zoom out to reveal this weird fish that is in the shape of a clarinet who goes, and leaves crying. Oh my god. Okay, that's actually fucking hilarious. (laughs) That that joke is pretty good. There are actually a couple of really good jokes in this, and I'll point them out when we see them. But, um, so Squidward leaves... And he goes to uh, nearly mint condition comics, which is a, a shop now that he is probably the one that was in the uh, episode with uh, Patrick Song. Card. Yeah, and the trading card. Inside is, who'd have thunk it, Bubble Bass. I heard you screaming. You were just like, why, why is he, he in there? everything now? Why is he a main there character? Goes, for fuck's sake, Gus is going to think I'm lying. No, he's going to think I'm lying at what I'm going to say next. Oh, Bubble Bass is playing with a toy. And this is the only other, like, actually, no. This is one of the few other, like, decent jokes of the series. Of this episode, rather. Um, so, he's playing with an action figure of a character who appeared in Swamp Mates in Bubble Bass' superhero fantasy. Is a, um, like, superhero called Suburban Dad. He, he just grills. He's got, like, a spatula in one hand. <laughs> Yeah. He just wants to grill. Yeah, and, and the good joke comes like, oh, he, he comes with like, uh, he comes with like uh, grilling action, and he's got like a voice box with phrases, and he presses it, and Suburban Dad goes, "Not now, Billy. Daddy's had a long day." <laughs> that that is really funny, and and also very reflective of the way I feel most of the time I see a modern SpongeBob yeah. episode. And and there is a poster that's just in the background as part of the background. Never attention drawn to it. But for a superhero called Masculine Man. (laughs) That's one of them superheroes from that, um... That right wing one that, that, like, had all this crowdfunding money stolen by some... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so Squibbit is playing outside and Bobo Bass is like, this is unacceptable. And he leaps out, leaps into the air and crushes Squidward with his ass. Yeah, of course. But Stop it! That was Stop the, it, Bubble that Bass! That was the bit where I yelled, Bubble Bass. Gus is gonna think I'm lying. Bubble Bass? Why is it just like, okay, we need the ass character. Yeah. Bubble Bass making a comeback. We need some more, we need some more fan service. You just dig on all of the Bubble Bass episodes and you'll find out that, like, the lead story artist from Super Duper Sumo is, yeah. is responsible. Oh, no. <laughs> that show. Sadly, yes. I thought, listen, I thought, I thought all of them had to commit seppuku after they after that show was cancelled. I thought they had to be blacklisted from the industry and red listed from life. But yeah, they were taken out the back and shot by Sandy. By John Anto. Yeah. <laughs> Not so super duper now, are you? <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, I love the bit where he says it's super duper in time and he super dupers all over those guys. With his ass. Yeah, With I his... love the bit when I love the bit where John Enter took the showrunners of Super Duper Sumo and said, This is your 911, and then he killed them. Yeah, yeah. He drove a plane into them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He ran them over with his car, but it had plane wings pasted to the top. Insane. <laughs> exactly. Insane. All right, so Squidward then goes home after the anal assault from uh, Bubble Bass. Do not say those words. You're right, I shouldn't. <laughs> they are not. They are not allowed. No. So he's so where so I, I'm I'm just asking I'm just asking uh, which platform did you end up watching this SpongeBob episode yeah. on? X Hamster. <laughs> X Hamster. It was another episode of SpongeBob Square Nuts. <laughs> that like weird like Warner. <laughs>
<laughs> this thing on. Oh, I'm losing my shit. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank I'm losing you. my You're goose out. Time. Gus has his chained up. Yeah. Please send help. Okay, so he goes home <laughs> and he's, he's playing out of his window. Patrick is outside going, ha ha ha, smashy smashy. What is bashing two rocks together? And he looks up at Squidward and he's like, oh, Squidward's being attacked by that horrible screeching monster. And he throws up a rock once again, like, I think just like bonking Squidward in the head. And he like falls. Weird, weird parts of this episode are just like hazy to me. I feel like this episode like roofied me. Like I don't know what's. It happening. feels like Squidward's like because ostensibly this is about Squidward preparing for the open mic, but it feels like kind of like Squidward's trapped in like a Ralph Bakshi movie. Like just a bunch of weird shit keeps happening. Yeah, to and him. just everyone's like weird and like kind of slapstick violent to him. So he gets yeah. hit over. And then at the end, he's like, oh, do you know what? Now I'm going to let my um, clarinet have, uh, I'm going to put it here on this like altar, surrounded by candles with like a pillow and stuff. And I'm going to take my uh, pre-performance nap. We're going to change some people's lives tonight. Scuba goes away and he comes back in like an evening coat with like a tie and stuff. And he's like, oh, um, clarinet, are you ready? And he sees that the window has been smashed. And the clarinet is gone and everything is moved over. No! And just immediately, he turns up his collar, everything goes black and white, and Roger Bumpus, affecting like a weird voice, starts to do like hard boiled narration. So, okay. and this is three minutes into an 11 minute episode. We're finally getting Squid Noir. But we needed to have Patrick eat bizarre objects and we needed to have Bubble Bass crush Squidward with his ass. Well, it, it's essential. So Squidward is like, yes, I need to find out who did this in like his narration. And SpongeBob is outside like eating like sand and like squirting it out of his holes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I hate that squirting phrasing. I hate that holes. phrasing. Stop saying squirting it out of his holes. I'm going to get so demonetized. <laughs> Sorry. But the thing okay, is... I'm going to take a long drink. Yeah, the thing is, there is one good line. <laughs> like, Squidward's narration is like, ah. He goes over and he says, ah, SpongeBob, why do you keep squirting that out of your holes? <laughs> and SpongeBob is like, oh, what are you talking about? Me squirting it out of my holes. <laughs> So You're it squirting it out of your holes. That's the end of the episode. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> oh yeah, I misread the thing. It was called Squirt Noir. <laughs> no, it's called Squirting It Out of My Holes. Squirt a marine. <laughs> these holes. <laughs> <laughs> sound like shit after all this we're gonna no no we're gonna leave all the laughter in as a matter of fact i'm gonna edit out everything but the laughter <laughs> this is the spongebob boys this is episode two the lost episode they finally found it oh god. it's spongebob boys 2 the sponge and oh my god squidward goes spongebob squarepants when it comes to just paying the stupid bill he always tips 20 percent like i thought that was like a decent like that's a good yeah, noir parody line Again, has utterly no effect after what just happened, but I want to say decent. Anyway, Squidward goes out and is like, is like interrogating him. And SpongeBob is like, oh no, Squidward, I can, um, I, like, I was at my grandma's house. That's my alibi. I can prove it because I've got the kissy marks all over my head. And there are kisses all over the top of his head. And then he points to his cheek and says, there's still room to Squidward. At which point, <laughs> Squidward kicks him away in his narration. It's like, he had to be telling the truth. I, I can't see how anyone other than family members would kiss that thing. And then when SpongeBob comes back, SpongeBob is like, hey, um, since you're doing this whole detective thing, can I be like your co-detective? And uh, Squidward is like, I don't have friends, only suspects. And SpongeBob said, a, uh, a suspect is just a friend you haven't exonerated yet. What? <laughs> Wait a second. It's full on, 
full on, full on, like taking from the wander over yonder. Yeah, <laughs> the arc words of the entire second season. So, um, SpongeBob does like a spin turn, and he's a detective now. And this weird running thing is, you know, how a detective might like flip a coin. Yeah, he'll flip it a couple of oh, times, yeah. then flip it way up, and it's just gone. And he'll like look up, and it isn't there. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Magic trick guy. So as they're driving away, they're discussing who's going to be the good cop and who's going to be the bad cop. And SpongeBob wants to be the bad cop. They are over at the Krusty Krab because that's the next. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I know what's about to happen. Um, that's oh, the next location, no. and they go into Mr. Krabs, and they miss the memo, and they both start being the good cop. So they start like giving him a makeover. Until by the end, he's like fully in drag, and like is like wearing they, a towel. They dress bimbo-fied and has, like, Mr. Krabs too. Yeah, and like then like either Squidward or SpongeBob, I can't remember which one is. Like, hey, check out the dame, and they have like a gross-up, close-up, like pan-up that makes Mr. Krabs look like very old and craggly in his drag. They start interrogating him about the missing clarinet. You're not going to fucking believe me, and that's what I hate about this, but this this is really oh, what no, happens. No, come on. Mr. Crab says, I've been here all day. Look at my butt groove. And they look over <laughs> to see the two-cheeked imprint on his seat. <laughs> and wait, <laughs> wait. SpongeBob runs his finger along it and smells it. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm going to die. I will not be able to survive. I'm going to kill you. SpongeBob goes full fucking seat sniffer. He's that in detective this. from um Natural Born Killers. Yeah, that is a perfect ass. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, this actually. I happened. hate this so much. So then they leave, and they go to um the uh the near mint edition or the fuck the comic book store is called again, and. In there, they find Bubble Bass and his, like, cartoon nerd friends all, like, playing D&D. Of the course! Of course we there. weren't done with Bubble Bass. Is Kevin there? No. No, again, just Bubble Bass is now the stock nerd of this show. No! Even though he was, like, an unreasonable slob customer before. And where, that was his whole where, thing. Where are the guys from Weenie Hot Jr.? Yeah, I no, want the, them to come back so badly. I can only assume that maybe, like, Bubble Bass's voice actor was just like, hey, I got a lot of free time on my hands. You want to write this character in a bunch more? Both the guys from Weenie Hut Jr. and Kevin the Cucumber all died in a tragic bus crash in Rock Bottom. It was terrible. Yeah. Oh, my God. God. I think, I know, I, think I know the actor who does the voice of uh, Bubble Bass. I think it's Steve Bradley Baker. Probably. Probably. Yeah, he sounds yeah. very similar to some of the codenamed Kids Next Door villains, and I know that yeah. they're voiced by him. <laughs> no, you're right. Um, but anyway, so they go in, and of course they're playing like D and D because in SpongeBob is so out of date that that's still like a niche nerd activity. Yeah, yeah. And instead of instead of a like a really by... really popular hobby right now. Yeah, exactly. They go into Bubble Bass, and Bubble Bass is because you know it was a funny joke earlier, and they have to drive it into the ground. He's playing D and D using Suburban Dad. As like a like figurine. In it. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say he's playing D and D using his ass to like move he around just, the figurines. He just, like, flexes his butt cheeks to roll the dice. Like oh now kiss the princess, and he's got like a yeah. wig over his ass, with, like an eye drawn on each cheek. He's just holding the dice in between his cheeks, and he like twerks and throws the he dice comes onto out the table. With, like fart with reverb, which we know is on the table because it was in fucking Swamp Maid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, again, the fact that, like, the fact that, like, you know, YouTube editors needing an, a little extra time, they go to the Nickelodeon studios and they're like, will you employ us? It's like, sure, we love employing degenerate perverts. <laughs> just a robot just fired me. Will you get, will you let me sound design for Spongebob? <laughs> Yeah, fart with yeah. reverb. The guy with the cigar, he's like, hey, you got fart with reverb? Yeah, please, please, I can't get a job. Mr. Jester Robot fired me. I need a new job, Nickelodeon. Please give it to me. See, these are the kind of jokes we're allowed to make an hour deep in. Yeah. No one who doesn't touching like us, who isn't, like, certifiable, will get this I'm far. Touching Henry. Meg is deep in the, deep in the, knee. deep in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no! Deep in the arse. This is a great time to say that if you like good written things, 
go check out the Kingmaker history. It's created by Meg Moore. It is. Chuton I, right I here. promise you, it's not degenerate. Yeah, that no one crushes anyone else with their ass yet. Yet, um, leave, leave some comments, maybe. But yeah, it's right here on YouTube. It's really cool. It's a fantasy adventure with steampunk elements set in 1911. There's a hard magic system. <laughs> Yeah, hard magic system, there's a MILF, there's a DILF. Honestly, just hearing about the, like, you know, alternate history steampunk adventure that is the Kingmaker Histories has made me feel just a little bit more sober. And for a second, I forgot I was doing Spongebob Boys because I was just thinking about how cool the hard magic system is, how cool the alternate history is, and that, like, lovable trio of characters that goes on all sorts of adventures all across Europe. It has actually got some <laughs> big-time voices in it because oh, yeah. there, are, there are people in it who have been in uh, Genny Tarkovsky's Primal. There yeah, people... well, she hasn't shown up yet, but she's going to she's be. She's about in it. to. Um, there's another actor who appears in an episode that Gus wrote because yes, Gus and I have both written episodes and have done uh, fun little voice cameos in it. Uh, who was in a <laughs> BAFTA-winning anime dub for a, a animated movie out of Japan. Mm -hmm. So cool, fucking shit. Um, yeah, definitely go check out the Kingmaker Histories. And oh yeah, if... the main the main character. Of the Kingmaker history is, is uh, a voice actor who was in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Yeah, so if you're uh, AAA a AAA game. Yes, yeah, so if you're a Borderlands, so yeah, go check it out. You'll have a great time. It's uh the it's very different, but in its like indie spirit and commitment to bizarre fun, creativity, and lots of gayness. It's the spiritual successor to Less Is More. Yeah. So go check it out. And if you want something more spooky... All of the Less Is Morgue actors who still willingly speak to me are in it. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and um, we, we we fully recommend that you go check out if you want something a bit spookier, but not like utterly vile in the way that Spongebob well, is. Well, I mean, okay, a the episode bit that I wrote Fair. has uh, the vibes of that one episode with the teleporter. Fair. Unpur vile. Unpur vile. But uh, check out Mayfair Watcher Society. It's a... Uh, official bloody disgusting audio drama that adaptation is adaptation of Trevor Henderson's painting. Yeah, made in collaboration with Trevor Henderson himself. He's a cool guy. We've all spoken to him. He approved the scripts. We're gonna get him on an episode. Someday. Yes. So yeah, please check out the Kingmaker Histories. Please check out Mayfair Watch Society. We would be deeply appreciative if you did. Ditto for liking, commenting, subscribing, and showing your friends. Anyway, now back to Squid Noir. And now back to Spongebob Bellies. Spangbab Bims, didn't as it, I call it. Did, didn't Spim it feel dum really... Doo dabba dooba dows. <laughs> well, like, didn't it feel really great to briefly, like, come up for air yeah. before continuing this dumpster dive? Yeah, so... now, now, yeah, now we are once again submerged in the bubble bass ass, <laughs> as we will ass. all be someday. God, bubble, bubble ass, ass. <laughs> alias Miss M. Oh um, my god. It's one for the Tropa Tales fans. Don't say Tropa that. Fans. Go check that out. Anyway, so, um, bizarrely, rather than him running away, him and SpongeBob just have, like, a toy fight between the suburban uh, dad and SpongeBob's Mermaid Man toy. And that's, like, its own, like, imagined <laughs> sequence of, like, a tiny mermaid man and um, suburban dad fighting in the comic book store. I mean, who could who could forget that classic detective story trope of two men fighting each other with action figures? Exactly. Oh, also, I you remember that? Forgot. You remember that part in the Maltese Falcon when the guy brought out yeah, the other Sam Maltese Shade Falcon out, and they did, Sam like, Shade a, out like a fucking... fight with it? Yeah, yeah, Sam Spade brings out his fucking action man and, like, he, he holds it up and goes, pew, 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 pew! Yeah, this is the version for kids, the Maltese. And, and then the Falcon shoots lasers out of its eyes yeah. and melts the action figure. God. Uh, oh, yeah, I just remembered earlier, a, a foggy memory thing came back to me. What happened when Plankton threw the rock? Because I remember screaming banned from YouTube while pointing at it. Oh, yeah, I remember um, that now. The, the rock <laughs> caught the clarinet, impaling Squidward through the forehead. And taking his head clean off and, like, sticking it to, like, a mounted pla or a plaque on the wall to make him look like a hunting trophy. Wow. Oh, oh my god. Up. Yeah, it's, it's... You couldn't do that on YouTube. You're disturbing the, the, the continuity of the body by removing parts <laughs> from it. Like the continuity of the body. That's how we'd have to, like, type it. So to not get the... Well, I won't stand for that. God. So... Yeah, after this battle with Bubble Bass. That's another Bass, one that you can your day job. Yeah. 
card. <laughs> so <laughs> in in my in my writing for children, I bet it surprises you all to hear that I do that, and so does Gus. Anyway, and sometimes me. Yeah, and sometimes mostly me. I'm unemployed. We, we... <laughs> Please employ me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, after that they go back to the scene of the crime, and Patrick is just there eating goo. And... There's always some fucking goo in there. <laughs> yeah. Why is there so much goo this time around? SpongeBob yeah. is a gooey show. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like a I gooey, got a high slimy tolerance show. for goo. I got a file on my computer named stomachambience.lav that I used for a Kingmaker episode. If that doesn't make you want to check out the Kingmaker histories, I don't know what does. We know your Vaughn <laughs> Fox here on the Dutch Gentleman channel. Yeah. But anyway, so um yeah, it goes back. It turns out the goo that Patrick is eating, that we can only tell is like just goo to begin with, because obviously it's all black and white, um, is actually jellyfish jelly. And we realize at this point that like a jellyfish had stolen the clarinet, and they go to a hive at Jellyfish Fields, where a jellyfish is playing the clarinet, and Squidward snatches it back from the jellyfish. Does it sting him? No. He begins playing his like kind of screechy jazz numbers, and the jellyfish begin to vibe. They love it. They love the music. At which point, I thought jellyfish liked EDM. Yeah, I mean, I, they're variety. They have culture. The jellyfish are more cultured than anyone else in this show. It's apparently, true. <laughs> SpongeBob does his coin flip thing again, which he's done many times throughout this episode, and he's like, "I wonder where they're all going," and then just a load of coins fall on him. And He's fucking dead. they use these coins <laughs> to convert the jellyfish hive into a popping jellyfish jazz club called The Hive, where there's a buff jellyfish bouncer outside. Oh, and, no! And, and the episode oh, ends no! with just on the inside, Squidward just playing his set to like a packed house of jellyfish. A weirdly happy ending. You made that up. So they've made the jellyfish, like, they've given them capitalism, and now they've, like, opened clubs, and now they, like, have these events and stuff, and... Yeah, they're out here the doing, they're out here doing fucking La La Land for jellyfish. This was not even a noir episode, really. It was, it was a noir just a bunch of things for like that five occurred. Minutes yeah. in the middle. What the fuck? Why would SpongeBob even bother, like you know, with any kind of like? Oh, we haven't done a noir episode yet. A lot of other shows did it. Fairly Odd Parents did it. Cards the Cowardly Dog did it. Let's do it. And then they like don't. They like halfway commit and then like do a bunch of other like random bullshit. I feel like Put SpongeBob bubble bass in there. itself, the show, has ADHD. And Megan goes I would that, agree so with say that. that. I'm allowed to say it. We I can say that. I can every day from the time, from the ages of eight to 18 to not be able to say jokes about ADHD. Exactly. I took the fucking, I took the fucking Concerta too in college, but then it gave me a facial twitch, so I gave it up, and I've been so normal ever since. <laughs> He's been so This channel normal. is proof. <laughs> exactly. I've been the most normal man you've ever seen. Nobody is more normal than me, so, and I will fight anyone who says otherwise. Because yeah. that's a normal me, thing I'm to do. I'm normal and I'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're both normal, and we will both murder you. What's so annoying, and the echo chamber thing proves that, is that that, like, noir is so tropey that parodies like this are genuinely, like, like, it is so good, so easy to do a halfway decent one. Like, it is the most, like, like, there's even, like, the plug-and-play archetypes yeah. that you can fit people you in. Fatale, your femme fatales, you. your, like, informants, your villains, yeah. your, like... Yeah, that's... I think that's the thing about, like, mystery stories in general is that there's got to be, like, a bit of novelty to the fact that you're doing the mystery story. It can't just be playing it straight. Yeah, it's true, but that's the thing. It does neither here. I think a lot of noir parodies are informed only by other noir parodies. Yes, that's the thing. it's like, do you think the people that made this have read The Maltese Falcon? Or The Big Sleep? Yeah. Or seen The Maltese Falcon? Or like the fucking, what's it, uh, The Postman Never Rings Twice, yeah. or Double Indemnity, yeah. or like any of these classics that like, you know, God, created fucking a lot. Double Indemnity rules. Um, but that's the thing. I it's... am a big sleep fan. I like that book a lot. Good old Philip Marlowe. Yeah. There's actually a new Philip Marlowe movie coming out, isn't there? I think Liam Neeson is playing, and it's just called like Marlowe. Interesting. 
Um, I do know that I I got into noir because um, series of unfortunate events, uh, prequel books, book quartology, answers to all the wrong questions is that's a good noir. That's a like, good homage. noir parody. That is a a fantastic like kid friendly noir homage. Because that's the thing, it's not hard to do no. the like. My my first big writing project, which we've like clowned on rightfully many times, Congeria. Um, yeah, Congeria, Congeria is like yeah, a very like like stereotypical uh, like neo noir. And for more on that, join the Patreon one dollar a month and listen to our uh, Cold, Cold Hell. Hell one. Stefan Rizowitzki yeah. called it. Yeah, it's where we uh, like pay yeah, out. On was he terrific. directed I don't it. Remember the... We're all boozed, and this is destroying our minds. Okay. Speaking of which, Meg, you're up with your second right. one that, if I remember correctly, now, had a horrible title that now, scares um, me. I chose this episode because of the title, "The Ballad of Filthy Mark," <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "This is the peak." Of what modern SpongeBob is to me these days, SpongeBob should just be renamed to the yeah. Ballad of Filthy Muck. The so. Ballad of Filthy Muck. I love that title. Uh, is it anything like the Ballad of Buster Scruggs? I don't. Well, they do sing a song about Filthy Muck, so the Clearly. title's not a lie. There is actually a, a ballad. Um, I didn't listen okay. very closely to the lyrics because I was kind of you just... You were screaming. Um, I heard it from upstairs. I was just kind of screaming. <laughs> um, bad things it, happen in this So one. let me um, guess. Is this is this some kind of Western parody no, episode? No, it isn't. All right, hit us. Hit us. What happens? So so um, we open on a shot of Patrick's rock with stink lines coming off of it. Already. Of already you should be afraid. Uh-oh, stinky. Oh, oh, fucking stinky. <laughs> oh, stinky. So, He's smelly. Um, so the rock <laughs> opens up and Patrick is there and he's got big green smell lines coming off of him. And he is so stinky. He's so stinky. And he like globs <laughs> off of the, you know how he'll like, 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 so, like schlop. schlop off of the, the back of the thing. Yeah. And when he does that, the stink lines become so powerful that the rock melts around him. And so he just gets up and he like walks out of the puddle that is the rock and uh, some lady walks by walking two, Ugh. like, worm poodles. And she's just like, oh, that horrible smell. And she shoves her two poodles into her nose holes. Ew. This is another thing where I think we were saying this the other day of, like, obviously, haha, smelly is like a stock cartoon joke and kids laugh at it. But sometimes when you, especially with, like, farts and body odor, when you're getting into green gas territory, it starts to get yeah, yeah. unwholesome. Yeah, stink lines, stink lines are acceptable. They're on the when line. The They're cloud, big dog. When it's the cloud, it's like, oh, you spend a lot of time on certain forums. Yeah, no, exactly. It's it's, it's like how like fucking Total Drama Island just looks unclean. It just looks like it's made for the whims of pervs. Yeah, and nothing else. It's almost like the people who wrote this episode are big fans of Trash Chan! Yeah. Yeah. The greatest yeah. waifu, waifu who ever stunk a smelly stink. Girls who stink good! Hey, remind, it's, the, it's that fucking comedy She smells game, so like, good. Oh, the smell of this hoodie Bad. is going to ruin your life. Cut to masturbating in the hood. I thought you were going to say it's that uh, <laughs> girls who fart. Women who fart! There are three words that best describe her. Stink. Stank. Stunk. stunk. dun na na Patrick walks down to the Krusty Krab and like the stink lines like melt the Krusty Krab sign and it like wilts and like melts. This is just a shit version of the fucking um Smelly Breath episode. Yeah. yeah. Ugly so, Barnacle episode. So um SpongeBob is cooking up uh Krabby Patties in the grill, and then a big stink cloud comes out of out from like camera left and a, a hand comes out of the stink cloud and punches spongebob and spongebob is like whoa what's that smell and he turns around and patrick's there and he's like patrick you stink really bad it's almost impressive how badly you stink uh when was the last time you took a bath and patrick goes the i can't think back that far and so spongebob is like you know what? Like, props to you for being this smelly. Can I? Like, he's pulled his nose off at this point, and then he puts it back on, and he's like, "Can I get a? Can I get another hit of that?" No. And Patrick raises his arm, oh. and Patrick. The thing about Patrick is that there are like stubble marks in his armpits that imply that he shaves. Patrick manscapes. I 
Oh, oh God! Why would a starfish grow hair? Why would that happen? Are we gonna cut to a joke of oh now? Fucking SpongeBob is masturbating into Patrick's Bermuda shorts, cause why not? <laughs> Wait. Oh! No, don't say no, that to me! No! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I am leaving the mortal coil! I'm gonna die! Yeah! Oh my god, he finally released another EP after his hit, I'm losing myself in you! Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. There's no back to this chair, I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna really SpongeBob, fall. SpongeBob, like, smells Patrick on Patrick's armpit, and his eyes, like, burn up, and his eyelashes disintegrate and his head like explodes. Is he getting fucking high off and then of he, Patrick? Yeah, he's getting high off of Patrick's stink. Patrick is officially a girl who stinks good. Um, so, so then pa um, Mr. Krabs, Mr. Krabs, <laughs> Mr. Krabs is in his office like putting coins. I bet he's about to do something really yeah, normal. He's about to do something so normal. Oh, so, Mr. Krabs is putting coins in his coin bank, which has, like, a little version of him that, like, pulls the coins in. And so he sniffs, his, he, he gets, a, the stink line comes in and goes in his nose, and he's like, hmm, what's that horrible smell? And he smells his own armpit, and he goes, <laughs> armpit, and he goes, that's not me. And then he smells, he takes the little tiny Mr. Krabs out of the coin box, and he smells him, and he's like, no, it's not him. And then he's, like, sniffing around... Like, he sniffed Squidward, he goes into the toilets, and he sniffs, like, a guy who's sitting on the toilet shitting. This is, like, all of the weird what sniffing the shit fuck? in Victoria. Yeah. You know Stop how characters are always, that. like, sniffing each other in a really uncomfortable oh way. Yeah, so he sniffs the I, guy, I and gotta, like, I gotta ask, is this leading up to Mr. Krabs being like, Ah, Patrick, we've gotta sell your bathwater! No. It'll make the Krusty Krab millions! No, no. Okay, good, um, what happened? Unfortunately, no. So, um... <laughs> So he, that he, would be he takes probably, a, he, that would he goes in and he sense. sniffs this guy who's taking a shit and he's like, mm, no, it's not that. And Mr. Krabs leaves. And then the guy, it's that, that one fish, he's like blue and he wears like a fedora and a business suit. I know the one you yeah, mean. Yeah, he's sitting there like, you know how in cartoons when people are taking shits, they always have the newspaper yeah. uh, to cover up their body. Yeah. So, um, so the, the guy, the businessman fish, he like shrugs and looks at the camera and goes, well, you can't please everyone. Oh, yeah, that oh. so much. Like I love the fact that this is oh. so insane that we had to gloss over the fact there's a tiny Mr. Krabs in a coin box. Like that didn't even rank among like <laughs> things we should pay attention to. Yeah. yeah, wait a second. What? Like the wave of that just hit me. So um, then Mr. Krabs fi <laughs> follows the stink to the to the kitchen, and he kicks. Patrick out for being too smelly, and Patrick lands in a field of flowers that all immediately wilt from the stink. And he stands up and he goes, I'm not going to take this sitting down. I'm, you know, Mr. Krabs is like, you're not allowed back into the Krusty Krab until you take a bath. And and Patrick is like, I'm not going to take this sitting down. I am I am making the, the declaration of stink dependence. And then he <laughs> rolls around original. in like, he rolls around in like rubbish and like old socks and shit for like a solid minute. There's like a montage of him. Just rolling around in shit and just becoming stink. The advanced stink. The strongest stink. The ultimate stink. Here is the worst well, this is the selection you were of things. Screaming at, just going, these... "What the fuck?" What yeah, the fuck? What yeah. And the I, fuck? I, 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 no, um, no, I, this no, is no. probably the part where, um, yeah, this is the part where I just like screamed in terror. So Patrick like rolls around in the dump and he becomes just like, he becomes just like a pile of just shit, just like green. N like green trash bin goo with like fish skeletons and tin cans and don't read into that <laughs> yeah um uh you know like like bones and banana banana skins and apple cores and tin cans and shit he is trash chan he becomes trash chan and so he's just walking around just being like a stink man this guy comes out and is like amazing and takes his picture and uh, it ends up in the paper, and he becomes like a stink cryptid. He's the skunk ape. <laughs> yeah, he, it, and that is he is the that skunk is the, the the titular um, filthy muck. Okay. The filthy muck is the name of the cryptid that Patrick has become. And there's an old man who is, you know, how old man Jenkins is a different guy every episode. Yes. Well, this this episode's old man Jenkins is like, ah, I can't smell. You don't intimidate me. 
you stinky guy. Patrick snaps his neck. Everybody's <laughs> like, everybody else is like yeah. running away from the stink. Mm. Um, and but old man Jenkins is like, he lost his sniffer in the war or some shit like that. Fucking Valkenheiser's yeah. uh, nose. Yeah. Good. So so Patrick stink lines turn into fists and beat the shit no, out of no, him, right? Until he bleeds around. and dies. Cut back to SpongeBob at the Krusty Krab, and he's reading over that guy that was taking a shit earlier is like eating his his burger and looking at the newspaper, uh, a different newspaper, I presume. Um, but SpongeBob is like, "Oh, I know that guy. That's Patrick." He's pointing to the paper, and as he's talking to this guy, he's like pulling his mouth and like sma- like papping his head, and basically doing all the things that I do to Henry when it's when true. he's not paying enough attention to me. Um, <laughs> so he's like, "I gotta go to him. I gotta go to my friend. He's become a stink ball. Save him. People think save him he's from a the monster. Stink. I gotta save him from the stink." And he's like striking all these dramatic poses and then everybody else in the Krusty Krab claps and Spongebob is like, all right, there's only one thing I have to do to find... Get the scent? Yeah. He, um... So he takes his nose off and the nose barks (laughs) like a dog and then he takes a (laughs) pair of Patrick's um, board shorts out of his own pocket and gets his nose to smell it, and then the nose, like, points in a direction, starts barking like a dog, he puts a collar around his nose and is led away by his nose, which is still barking like a dog, um, and as he leaves, there's a couple that are walk a, a couple, I have to stress, a male fish and a female fish, walking by the Krusty Krab, they stop and see Spongebob being led away by his barking nose, and the man <laughs> turns to the woman and says... See, honey, I told you this was a pet-friendly town. And she puts a collar on him, and he gets down on all fours like a dog and starts barking. <gasps> what uh, the- There's no, a no, puppy no, play no, joke no, in no, Spongebob. No, 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 no. So first you have Spongebob smelling Patrick's pants, and then we follow that up with, like, puppy play. I don't, yeah, yeah, wh- like, There's a puppy what? play joke in this episode. Somebody figured, somebody figured this was the time to do that. I mean, let's it's see. It's not even that okay, related so to the episode. so here's the, like, questionable fetish shit in this episode. Number one, the guy taking a shit, being like, ah, oh, you can't please anyone, everyone, implying that he's the kind of person that invites other people to smell his shit. Number two, Spongebob smelling Patrick's board shorts. Number three, fucking puppy play. Also, like, does SpongeBob's nose look a little sus when detached? Yes. Because his nose is a little bit... Phallic. Yeah. So that's what I meant when I said wait. And we Uh were punished for waiting. All right, let's continue. So he follows follows his nose to the dump where he finds Patrick, but Patrick is so stinky that he has, like, a stink force field, and SpongeBob physically cannot touch him. So what he does is like, okay, let me get let me get myself a client. Maybe if I like Im- inoculate myself to the stink a little bit. So he gets like his fi- he gets like some of the generic um like cartoon green goo on his finger and puts it under his nose. Basically, looks like a dirty Sanchez. Ugh. So this episode is like I, uncomfortable I, 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 in a lot of ways. I'm so repulsed um, by this. So Again. then he's like, okay, it's working. And so then he gets a little bit more, he, he puts more trash on himself and he's like, haha, it's kind of fun to be covered in trash. And he jumps into Patrick's arms and he's like, oh, if people are calling you the, um, the filthy muck, then you can call me Lil Yuck. And so then this I will is not. when, then this is when That's the ballad, gross, SpongeBob. the ballad begins. Oh no. So they're like a sort of, um. Stink. Yeah, they're like they will. They will rule Bolivia, together. Um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Yeah, they're like kid they're like Butch stink. Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and they're just going around town like scared. Like they'll go into a restaurant, like everybody will run away because they smell the stink, and then they'll be like, "Oh, somebody left this lovely cake," and they'll eat the cake, and they'll or they'll go to they go to Glove World, and they're like, "Oh," um, and everybody runs away from the stink, and they're like, "Oh, there's no lines for this roller coaster. That's great." And every once in a while, old man Jenkins will be like there and be like, oh, I lost my sniffer in the war. You can't scare me. So we got so we got smell stinkity in the shit pants kid yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what? So um, 
they basically just have like a stink friendship montage and it, it with the song playing and then it ends with a them just Is it like, like a bluegrass type song. Yeah, it's like so. a it's very similar to that in the road stretched on like an angry woman, yeah. like an angry woman, like an angry Some woman. Somebody down the head like an angry like, woman. Yeah, or that like can you hear so roll? <laughs> that kind of like cartoon western. Yeah. Song. So um exactly. Little so they're Johnny they're Cash. like they're just chilling on top of a um they're chilling on top of like a pile of rubbish at the tip and they're just like oh look at all the beautiful stars in the sky oh here comes some people with por- fit, uh forks and pitchforks torches and pitchforks forks are pitchforks I forks have had fork. not a lot of food but uh, alcohol. forks and snorks so forks and snorks so the guys come up and they're just like we're gonna run you out of town if you guys don't take a bath. Um, and then Spongebob, like, immediately cleans all the rubbish off himself and is like, it's me, it's the town's favorite fry cook, Spongebob Squarepants. And they're like, okay, okay, you can stay. But that guy's gotta go. And he's like, no, I'll make him take a bath. So he takes him to the, the car wash. While the guys with por- uh, torches and pitchforks are chasing them, they go to the car wash, and they go through the car wash. This does nothing. Patrick is still stinky. Um, but the guys that run through the car wash after them with uh, the the car wash puts out their torches and they're like, "Did anyone bring matches?" And one guy goes, "We gotta go to the fire store!" And they run away to go to the fire store. And A then they're chasing. Then they're chasing him again through the laundry, like like um, but like he puts Patrick through the coin laundry and you know like all this other stuff. And they like break through the wall of the laundry shop. They chase him back to the dump. Like he tries to like spray him with a hose to get all this trash off. And but it, nothing's happening. He has become the stink. He is. It's caked onto his body. But then he's like, "Wait, True no! Stink form. This is my best friend. You guys have got to help me clean him up." And Ultra then instinct. the guy who's like the head of the mob is like, "Do we get to scrub really hard to get our anger out?" And P- SpongeBob is like, "Yeah, that would help if you scrubbed really hard." And then the guy's like. Well, good! Oh, no. And then everybody pulls, like, everybody's instantly happy, and they all pull out mops and soap, and they clean, they clean Patrick, but then he's, like, dissolved. Like, nothing's <laughs> he's there. fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 his essential self was lost in the sting. Yeah. <laughs> he was no more. <laughs> but are you ready for the twist of the episode? SpongeBob starts crying because yeah, Patrick's fucking dead. But then Patrick walks in, and he's got a towel around his waist and a shower cap on, and he's holding a rubber duck, and he goes, oh, um, yeah, I've just been taking a really nice long bath this entire time because uh, I really thought about it, and I realized I wanted to be allowed back in the Krusty Krab. And so they then, just killed Filthy Muck? They killed Filthy Muck, <laughs> but, but the thing is, Filthy Muck, like, what the was wind it? blows some trash back up to the top of the, the rubbish tip <laughs> heap. And it like reforms into Filthy Muck. So Filthy Muck lives on. So it's, it's Frosty day. the Snowman rule? Yes. Like, oh, he was he's made like, of Christmas muck. He's he like, will never be gone no. forever. Farty the shit man. Yeah, Farty the shit man. Filthy Farty muck man. the shit man. Filthy was the a muck stinky man. fucking So, um, slut. that was my uh, episode. I feel like I've been sitting here describing it for 40 years. What? <laughs> I, I, Patrick I, created a dirt homunculus. Welcome to SpongeBob, yeah. boys. Yeah, welcome to. I have a question. Goss. <laughs> how good is yours? Obviously not good in the traditional sense, but how juicy. Well, let me tell is you, it man. Goo? It's another it's another plankton episode. No! <laughs> then tell you what. <laughs> Personally, I found my second one a little overwhelming. A little underwhelming rather. Should we do that one now and then Gus you bring us home? Yes. Let's do it. I'm gonna down the rest of my drink. You you sure? You sure you don't want to hear the plankton episode right now? I think we will save it for dessert. Okay, so this episode is called Scavenger Pants. Scavenger Pants? That is, that is indeed the name of it. Fallout Raiders. Scavenger Pants, but I barely know her pants. <laughs> God damn it! You know they, they, that episode got banned because there was too much panty scavenging. <laughs> yeah, um, it was. It was a full episode of the panty raid. Yeah. God, it was like a sort of Ocean's Eleven style heist. <laughs> of, like, <laughs> women's underwear. Mr. Krabs' mom. Oh god! Oh in god! <laughs> that feels like an anime that would exist. I'm stealing panties in another world. <laughs> They're stealing panties in another dimension. Isn't it so funny that like back in the day, the two and there were only two ways to do 
hack anime parodies. They would be either a Pokemon parody or like a Dragon Ball Z parody. Yeah. And maybe, maybe if the creators were a bit older, you'd get like a Speed Racer parody. Yeah. But these days, yeah. Isekai has proliferated so bad that when you think like parody anime, you're going to do an Isekai parody. Yeah. Well, now they got, now they got like Isekais that are basically parodies of other Isekai. <laughs> it's an Isekai playing an Isekai. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, Scavenger Pants begins with uh, Squidward, because I got a pair of wonderful Squidward episodes. It's so um, funny that, like, yes. you got two Plankton episodes, you got two Squidward episodes, I got two Patrick episodes. Yeah. And these are yeah. characters that no one wants to spend time with. Yeah, it's almost like the, the name of the show is Spongebob. Anything but Spongebob. Yeah. You know, in modern Spongebob, it's like anything but an actual Spongebob episode. And if Sandy's going to show up, she has to, like, ruin everything because uh, this is also Black Mirror. Yeah, no, Sandy is an evil scientist. Um, what if your mum run on batteries? Yeah. <laughs> Science is inherently evil, but also so is stupidity. And these two things are, it's a yin and yang, but both sides are equally unnecessary. And the universe is made up of unnecessary it's things. It's the true centrist. I'm in the middle and everyone is stupid around me. Doug Walker. Yeah. I yeah, no, I'm simply I'm simply the line that divides the yin and yang. But, uh but I'm neither part of them. Doug Walker be like, it's super easy to outsmart everyone around me when I'm also writing their lines. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I am the one person who knows about the matrix. It's true. Anyway, so Scavenger Pants begins with Squidward doing interpretive dance, because of course Interpretive Pants. And he's got like classical music playing. And then SpongeBob and Patrick come in and they're like, hey, Squidward. And he's like, ah, because he's fucking Squidward. And uh, they throw the classical music, uh, like vinyl record, out of the player and goes into Squidward's mouth. And they put in another one that's just. It keeps going in his mouth. That I can just describe as just kind of rockabilly idiot music. The... Oh, yeah, we've, we've discussed idiot <laughs> music. Yeah, that SpongeBob and Patrick like... just sort of dance to. They just vibe. They love idiots. And, and stuff Squidward's like, why are you idiots. in here? And they, in the most annoying voices, they just go like, we're in here because we're bored. And we're bored because we don't have anything fun. Why does to anyone do. do anything? Sheer absolute boredom. Yeah. <laughs> They're in their full Alistair arc. I'm here because I like tormenting you. <laughs> I like talking I to know, you! I don't know what Stella sounds like, so I just did Lucy Lace Make. I... Just get more and more cockney with every just like, I'm the worst character, single handedly bringing the quality of the show down. It's by funny so that much. Vivian Madrano hates women. <laughs> this SpongeBob boys, we can say fucking anything, and no one will oh, give I a still shit. You haven't forgiven Vivian Madrano for baiting me on Twitter once. That's a true story. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get into that in a Patreon. <laughs> you have to pay for that. All right. Hell of a boss fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we got fucking spicy in this. Yeah. Okay, so um, at the end of them annoyingly saying they're bored, one of them ki- just just for the fun of it kicks over a stand with uh one of the Squidward's many like busts on it. And Squidward manages to leap over just in time, and he catches it, and it doesn't break. But then his head just shatters. I feel like they stole that joke. <laughs> I've seen that joke somewhere. It ultimately yeah, just no, feels too the, clever. It's, yeah, it's too funny to be a modern SpongeBob joke. Yeah. So um, the uh, Squidward, they're like, "Oh, what should we do?" And they just go around like fucking his house up. And then Squidward is like, "I've got an idea. I'm gonna send you guys on a scavenger hunt." And the first one, he is like, you need to get the legendary desert sandwich, um, which is in the Bikini <laughs> Bottom Badlands. This feels like a Minecraft video. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yep. You gotta get the Spongebob Patrick, you gotta get the fucking legendary desert sandwich in 100 days. You gotta get all the hearts so you can be strong enough to fight the big boss. Yeah, who was kidnapped. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so, and he's holding all of the other woodland creatures for ransom yeah god damn <laughs> but with the help of Mr. So how, Beast so how do they find so, so so how do they find the magical desert item in the in the in the uh, non-descriptive Badlands location well, because they go out the front of the house and there is just like a crossroads sign 
and one side is like 20 leagues away, Bikini Bottom Goodlands. And it's like comically nice with like rainbows and like a smiling oh tree that's that dancing. Yeah, and then 20,000 the leagues good away is the Bikini Bottom Badlands, which is just a hellish desert with like caverns and bones <laughs> and shit. Um. <laughs> Uh, it's like the it's like it's like that meme with the like you know the person starting in the middle just has f u over their head and one of them is unny and the other one's like ucked up yeah, yeah it's so yeah true. Cri- well yeah they're saying crypto and the one the good path says zoology and the bad path says currency yeah no it's so yeah true. exactly so, exactly it so it's that exact meme no okay my favorite one is from uh, a a pathfinder uh source book which has like a paladin just kind of wringing their fists at the heaven and like th- there are two signs in front of them one that says anti-paladin's lair and the other one says burning orphanage and they're like ah which should i pick so fucking funny i need to either stop the paladin or save the burning orphans the from the orphanage <laughs> I think I'll just wait and see how it all plays out. Oh, no. But then you lose your paladinhood. You fall to become neutral. And neutral's the worst alignment. It is. A little bit of uh, D&D yeah. humor for those who understand such things. I mean, I play a paladin, so I got that joke. You better you better step away from the screen, audience, because I'm going to elbow you. And if you if you keep your face too close to the screen, I'm going to elbow you right in your eye. Did go you get it? Then we're going to go to water country. Get it? All right. Water Get the country, water country. <laughs> water country. Maybe Bikini when Bottom the is the capital the of water country. Top. Water country is a very good one. It's just gone. <laughs> okay. Baby, baby, so, water country now. So, water country. Yeah, it's a water country now. Suck loading two chum. shells into a shotgun. All right. So they're in the Badlands and they're like crawling along and Patrick is like, oh, so thirsty. And he falls around and he picks up SpongeBob and he wrings SpongeBob's Mate, sweat out of him. Mate, into his mouth. Mate, you're underwater. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. I no, come on. So then it comes back to Squidward who has been enjoying their you're, time you're, all... Like I referenced like an angry woman before, but this is that episode of um, yeah, with Billy and Mandy where we're just a parody of fear Dracula. and loathing. Yeah, we're Dracula. And Dracula have yeah. to get to the Denny's. It's so true. <laughs> but anyway, suddenly exactly. a a um like desert like sandstorm whirlwind comes towards them. Alright, fine. And then we cut back to Squidward, who is doing more interpretive dances, including this bizarre one where he's wearing a bathrobe, and he, like, pulls open the bathrobe like he's flashing, but then dances to the side out of the bathrobe and is dancing, but the bathrobe is still there, still just held open, with his hands still coming out of the sleeves. Even though he's a separate I can't ed- picture this. Henry, I literally can't picture what you're telling me <laughs> to imagine. You have to go Squidward and Squidward like, tentacles look at and it. Avatar of the Spiral. Yeah, because then he slides back <laughs> in and it's horrible. And then the things open and they're like, we did it, uh, Squidward. We found the desert sandwich. And the, like... <laughs> Whirlwind the co- desert sandwich. This the desert sandwich sounds like something from Steven Universe season one that like never gets mentioned or brought into the lore ever again. Here's the thing: the thing comes in, the smoke dissipates, and there's an actual like witch who controls sand. Oh, the desert. Yes. Witch. And the, oh and my god, like, ah, ha, ha, it's me, the desert sandwich. And Squidward is like, no. she's the she's the third part of the holy the unholy trinity that is the beachside woman, the ice hag, and the sandwich. It's true. Tag yourself. Tag yourself on the ice yeah. hag. Seriously, in the comments, are you a beachside woman, an ice hag, or a sandwich? Tell us why. And are you on the beach that makes you old? Yeah. Maybe the sandwich made the beach that makes you old. She does, maybe. The maybe. closest one I think I'd be the beachside woman. <laughs> I'm very beachside. Not very womanly, but very beachside. Because you're from water country. We're pretty beachside, too. Anyway, so uh, Squidward is like, no, I meant the other kind of sandwich. And she's like, oh, don't worry. Like, I I worked at, like, a subway or whatever the thing is while I was, like, working through (laughs) evil university. (laughs) This This is someone's waifu. SpongeBob. And she she manifests a live action photo of a sandwich. In her hand. <laughs> <laughs> and Squidward, <laughs> and Squidward is like, this actually looks pretty good. And he bites it. Then white spikes stick out of his cheeks. 
I will never forgive you, Henry Galley, for saying that this was an underwhelming episode. Good point. Yeah, honestly, what I'm saying is actually pretty good. So, dead. So White spikes the cat of his cheeks, and then it's because the sandwich starts to growl and has teeth. So it's the sandwich's teeth that came out of it and, like, perforated his face, and it, like, keeps attacking him. <laughs> what the fuck? And then it just sort of cuts to, like, him. I feel like I'm tripping. Yeah, him recovering from that. The, by his I, was like, I was like, maybe I'll smoke kids. a bit of weed before I watch my SpongeBob episode. And Henry was like, "Don't do that." Yeah, it's like immediate bad trip. <laughs> You'll have a bad time. You'll pull a whitey, and I think now that you've seen the contents, you're like, "Yeah, I probably would have puked with this shit if I was on weed." But anyway, so then the next thing is, Squidward is like, "I need you to go and find the legendary boxing orchid, which is at the bottom of the Mariana Trench." <laughs> Because that's just canon now. Yeah. So they leave and they go to the Mariana Trench. And there's the the one like kind of genuinely good joke in this episode. SpongeBob c- gets a rope and he ties it to the to the top of a rock and like throws it off so he can kind of abseil down. He's abseiling down and his like Patrick is like, don't worry, I'll come too. And also throws a rope down and is like, abseiling down. And SpongeBob is like, nice work, Patrick. Where'd you find this rope? And he was like, oh, it was tied to a rock. And then they both just fall into I the like trench. That. That's a pretty good joke. Yeah, I like that. That, that is pretty good. Um, but the thing is, that's at least kind of decent, like, old-style Stupid Patrick. Yeah. Current side would have been like, oh, SpongeBob fell because he felt the need to eat the rope. Yeah. Because he's just, yeah, exactly. he's just gluttony from Full Metal Alchemist yeah. now. Yeah. But um, or he's just, or he's just like so malicious that he just goes like, "Oh, why is this stupid rope around this rock? This ruins the rock," and rope, he just like unties rock, it for no ridiculous. reason. Ridiculous. Yeah, um, I hate this rock. So they both fall into the Mariana's trench, and then they return to Squidward, presumably like days later, and they um give him the boxing orchid, and he's like, "Oh my god, it's beautiful." And then it and grows arms him, with yeah, boxing gloves and beats the shit out of him. Yeah. While SpongeBob and Patrick, who Why are now Squidward dressed as boxing commentators, even know about this stuff? I don't know. So after that, <laughs> after he's recovered from being beaten up by the boxing orchid, yeah, you're so right. This is an interesting episode. I lied to you guys. <laughs> you did, so, Henry, I'm gonna you, yeah, you fully gaslit us. So then he says, "You made me. You made me have to go last. You made me have to be like the act that follows this." Oh, good point. Yeah. So it ends with, like, the, the, no, it doesn't end with, it doesn't end. And it feels like it never, I feel like I'm still there watching it. But. <laughs> now we have to go find a weird magical so, artifact. So Scribble says, you now need to find, and he pulls out a book, says, you now need to find the Loch Ness monster. And there's just a photo of one of the famous, like, Nessie sightings. Oh, yeah, it. like the surgeon's photo. <laughs> yeah. And oh, wow, okay. Cut to SpongeBob and Patrick, who just go to live action Scotland. Like, it's just a photo of, like, Loch Ness, Scotland, with, like, the castle and everything. Oh my god. And they are, like, and again, another pretty funny visual gag is you can see the bottom of a boat moving around, and then it cuts to below. They're rowing a boat upside down underwater, That's like, fun. along the surface. Oh. And SpongeBob starts playing a bagpipe, and it attracts the like giant silhouette of the Loch Ness monster. Cut back to Squidward, who is yeah. It's time for us to see what um what Loch Ness monster theory the creators of SpongeBob subscribe to. Yes, so it um Squidward is dancing again every time he's in like a different outfit, doing a different stupid dance. And in this one, I think he ends it and it's just like, ah, oh, I'm the best. And then Spongebob comes knocking and is like, Squidward, we've bought the Loch Ness Monster. They walk in and the Loch Ness Monster's giant head like bursts through the thing above them. And it's like a kind of like, oh it's animated, God. but it's like a giant like reptilian monster. Okay, so please you thought, please you thought theory. Okay, lame pedestrian. Yeah. Um, I'm judging them, but whatever. <laughs> Nobody else is big brain. Like, okay, the most giant like wet brained, like huge wrinkly brained idea i've ever seen of the locust monster is that it's a type of slug that is big brain oh my yeah. god Kinda yeah wow anyway because the, okay. the thing too is that i'm realizing by the mechanics of this episode as well like squidward 
is able to send them off and like they will inevitably find something no matter how elusive it is. So like, why didn't he just go like, ah, go find the cure for cancer? Because that would in- cancer yeah, because that would show. introduce cancer into the SpongeBob universe. Yeah, but as if there isn't already yeah, cancer, no, cancer in the SpongeBob the universe. Is, like behind the scenes. Squidward is like in disbelief. He's like, how how did you find the Loch Ness monster? And Spongebob is like, oh, with these, and pulls out bagpipes. And Squidward is like, <laughs> it likes bag... Because it's Scotland, yeah. so bagpipes. Yeah, because Spongebob is a little bit, you know, it's nothing if not culturally sensitive. Yeah. So Squidward yeah. grabs the bagpipe and, is, and squeezes it, and is like, it likes bagpipe music? And Spongebob goes, no, it likes eating bagpipes. And then it just fucking eats Squidward. And we get, we get, <laughs> we get the French uh, narrator with... One long digestive tract later. No! Fuck off. And we cut to Squidward, like, sitting on a sofa, just looking kind of dejected with SpongeBob and Patrick on either side. No! He got fucking Land of the Losted! Yeah. No, I don't like that. So, Squidward is like, I need some way to get rid of them now. And he's like, I've got it. He grabs a photo of himself, draws a mustache on it, and is like... Now you need to find my long lost brother. Ah. Oh. They search until they find Squidward's mum's house. And it's like, hey, do you know where Squidward's brother might be? And she's like, oh, Squidward was an only child. And believe me, one of him was enough. And they're like, oh, so Squidward doesn't even have a brother. And Patrick's like, that'll make him even harder to find. Six months later. And. Wow. Squidward has, like, Somehow, through some means of construction, fused his house, SpongeBob's pineapple, and Patrick's rock. So he like he's just stolen their fucking houses Why? while they were gone. So Why he, is he so done he this? could have a bigger house that he dances for his around? dance studio. Yeah. Wow. What the, what the fuck? This is like an existential episode. Like this feels like it's like. It's been a journey, you know? Like, they found, like, bizarre witches and monsters, and Squidward's, like, Odyssey. ramping up yeah, for, like, to never see them like again. Like, Arthurian legends. What, SpongeBob and Patrick return, and they, like, shoot an arrow through, like, a bunch of loops yeah. to prove that they're really them? Well, they, they come back, and they're like, don't worry, Squidward, we found your brothers. No. At which point... Brothers? At which point, Squidward's mom enters and reveals that SpongeBob and Patrick talked her into adopting them. <laughs> so technically, they are Squidward's brothers now, and the episode ends with a shot of them all having an, am- uh, an awkward family photo shoot in bad sweaters. <laughs> End of episode. <laughs> that is scavenger pants. What the fuck? That... That went to some unusual places Every as that went on. Every that I've heard of the distance of now, it's just like talking about them. I just, I feel like I've lost a week of my life. That's the funny thing. Like, the reason that I didn't realize what goal this would be is these SpongeBob episodes, like a lot of things in life, are just fucking miserable to experience yourself. But are hilarious secondhand. Like, none of these episodes are as entertaining as they can be presented in this format. Meg's laughing. What have you thought I'm of? About in these holes. In these holes. I'm still in these holes. Squirmering. Squirmering. Awful. Shut up. No, I can't. Bring no, us God. home, Gus. Come I on, desperately, I right. desperately want to go home. So are we ready? Shots. Do you want to go piss? Are we ready no, for I, the... I, it's funnier if I wait. <laughs> We're gonna edit out all references to needing to pee. <laughs> Do, not. Do not! I said it to uh, be funny! Uh, I said it to be funny, guys! Keep it in! Oh no, the head Fine! Fell. We're all sitting here! I also need to piss! We're all sitting here until we can piss, okay? This time, Gus the last it. episode oh, called? is called. Pineapple Invasion. It's another Plankton episode. Because we love Plankton episodes. I love Plankton. <laughs> yeah. So this episode begins with the chum bucket and, like, the hand that makes up the chum bucket falls to the ground. Palm opens up. 
plankton scoots out of the chum bucket on like a scooter and he's got like a like a wagon with a um with a sheet over it and he's like oh boy it's time for another another stealing the Krabby Patty secret formula plan I'm ready I'm ready he says I'm ready you know like how SpongeBob did oh is this SpongeBob playing with like action figures as plankton no that would that would make sense somehow <laughs> but plankton says that and like Karen goes like ah uh, yeah you know uh and she sasses him and he goes what and she goes good luck. And she, like, flicks him, and he goes sailing into the Krusty Krab across the street. We and are sailing. He, <laughs> Sorry. So he wagons up uh, to, to Squidward, and he still hasn't revealed what's under the thing. And, like, Squidward's like, oh, uh, yeah, hey, Plankton, uh, you kind of skipped in the line there. And so Plankton, Plankton goes like, well, it's time for me to reveal the advantage of not having a nose. And s- no! Oh, no! Guess what's under the sheet? Guess what's under the is sheet, it, friends? Is it, is it Filthy Muck? Is it our friend Filthy Muck? Is he back? No. No. Uh, under the sheet is Mr. Stinky, who is a skunk wearing a, like, Sandy-style uh, fishbowl helmet with air in it. I fucking hate this show. This is... I hate this show. Wouldn't it be really so funny Mr. if Mr. Stinky... Plankton just hadn't thought it ahead. It's a full seal suit, and he just fucking gasses himself and dies. No, no, Mr. Stinky unleashes the stink, and the entire Krusty Krab is filled with green stink clouds, and all the fish are panicking, and they run out, and SpongeBob tries to protect the Krabby Patties, but he ends up having to get a whole big whiff of it, like his nostrils dilate, and it goes <laughs> into his face. I love that it just does it. Uh, like it, fundam- <laughs> it fundamentally does not matter that this is under the sea anymore. No, like, it used to matter. Let, let, let's take a yeah. plot that patently does not make sense for under the sea and do it, because... Who the fuck cares anymore? Let's give SpongeBob bones. Who yeah. gives a shit? Yeah, the, the 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 lip service to it being under the sea was that the skunk was wearing a helmet. That's the only yeah. like example of it. Mr. Krabs also takes a big old whiff and uh his eyes pop and explode yeah. from the stink and filling happen. them up. So everybody runs out and Plankton and SpongeBob run out and like the police are like surrounding the place. They're like, oh, there's been a stink. And Mr. Krabs goes like, I don't know what happened. All I saw was uh, some antennas and in a single eye, <gasps> Plankton's in there. Mr. Krabs is like, okay, I got to get back in there because Plankton, without his nose, he's going in and he's going to like get the formula while everyone's out there. So what he does is he... Chops off one of SpongeBob's arm cons- consensually. Banned he asks SpongeBob to do this. Banned from he, YouTube. He, he puts he takes off SpongeBob's arm and he puts it in his own nose hole. Um. So now he has SpongeBob's arm for a nose, and this makes him immune to the stink. Okay. So he runs back in. Okay. What does he do? And now, and and, and he runs into his office, and his SpongeBob arm nose points and goes plankton and plankton is sitting there at the vault with uh with dynamite around the vault and he's gonna blow the vault off okay why is this called pineapple invasion is this another classic like takes You'll, five of just the wait okay so plankton tnt is the safe and it blows up and um uh it turns out underneath that first safe is a second safe and yeah, plankton's all like whoa wait a minute I, I didn't expect there to be another one of those. So Mr. Krabs grabs him with the SpongeBob arm uh, for the nose and then pummels him with his, like, two other hands. And then SpongeBob runs in with another <laughs> SpongeBob arm for his nose and then flings Plankton out on a spatula. So they just kind of beat the shit out of him. Like, yeah. fucking rough him up, destroy yeah. him a bit. It just feels like there are so many moving parts to this. So many beat. This is like Death Note pacing. This is insane. Yeah. So part of this, part of this cerebral like mind game is that Plankton's ear, uh, his one of his antennas falls off inside of the. Uh, pre- pretend for a second that antennas are not like touch organs. Pretend that they're ears for some reason. Like just pretend okay. that because that's the only way this works. But one of Plankton's antennas is on the floor and Plankton is launched out of the uh, the restaurant. And so Krabs is like, oh shit, Plankton almost got through my vaults. I had like 
you know, if he had gotten through three more vaults, he would have gotten the formula. I got to reassess my security situation. SpongeBob, you should take the formula and hide it at your house while I do that. Oh, okay. Pineapple and, invasion. I got it. And it becomes this, like, yes. assault on Precinct 13 type thing. Yeah, so naturally, SpongeBob is like, well, wait. how? Why wouldn't Plankton, like, try to look at my house? He might know this. And Mr. Krabs launches into, like, a weird roast of Plankton's intelligence. Like, he goes, like, oh, he's a simple life form, incapable of abstract thought. He he cannot ruminate. He cannot divine the hypothesis. That is categorically untrue. Yeah, you, you know this, Eugene. He's, like one of the two smartest people in town and the other one is sandy he went to college known war criminal sandy cheeks yeah. it culminates in him like saying that like plankton is a tired clown <laughs> <laughs> who wrote this speech it's so weird like it, it feels like the world of shit speech from shape of water <laughs> like it's so it's so like needlessly like like cruel and getting at plankton or like the fucking um the like nick cage in vampire's kiss speech to the like assistant yeah about how she's completely yeah. worthless so naturally plankton hears all of this because uh remotely the antenna that's on the floor can relay all this information to him oh, okay and he goes like oh you think i'm stupid and an idiot huh well i'm gonna go to that house and i'm gonna take the formula he 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 ha 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 Ooh, Can ooh, I make ooh. a prediction? Yeah. This whole thing is going to be a fucking like Batman gambit on the part of Mr. Krabs who knew that antenna was there. Yeah. You fucking wish, man. Oh, no. You fucking wish. That would employ some guy. What was the fucking quote from Sex House again, guys? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's to call to call this evil would imply a clarity of purpose that I don't want to ascribe to anyone involved in yeah, this. Yeah, that's what I feel about that. Like, oh, how idiotic of me to assume that the events would be driven by things that are planted earlier and paid off later. Yeah, because that just doesn't happen in modern SpongeBob. It's just like, well, now it's this shit. Please go watch The Onion Sex House. It is infinitely funnier than modern we'll SpongeBob and it's decent very horror good on and its own. Quite disturbing. Really good. Don't fight Henry. Fucking love it. Great. <laughs> so anyway, uh, SpongeBob is headed home after his like shift, and Plankton shows up to go like, ah, you really, you really, uh, you really got the formula to to get home on time. And SpongeBob is like, oh yeah, yeah, I gotta go home and, and wash my formula. I mean hair, and like it's just Can't a wait. scene that exists to like. Like troll SpongeBob. He says formula. Um, he say the thing. Yeah. That's the joke. So anyway, SpongeBob goes home. Uh, he puts the formula. Uh, he puts the formula away, and he goes like, "Okay, so and it's the next day." And he's like, "All right, while I'm gone, Gary, you need to protect the formula." So this is a uh, this is a Gary. Does Gary eat plankton? This is a Gary versus plankton episode. Does Gary and no, eat uh, that. <laughs> that would make sense, uh, but it, something similar Does happens. Does Gary put but... on a little Rambo, Rambo headscarf like Gizmo and Gremlins and, like, drive a little car over Plankton? No, stop saying things that are funnier and more interesting <laughs> yeah. than what Not occurs. Not trying to make a joke. Not trying to ruin anyone's day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that any of these fuckers. <laughs> any of these little fucking fuckers are going to come out the wall and shoot a big old cuff shot at the doggy dicks. <laughs> Big Lord to come then. Please, after watching this, people. Oh, and after you've uh, watched slash listened to uh, fucking The King Make History's Maybe Watch 30, watch I Think You Should Leave. It's really good. That's one of those noises that are coming out of you. <laughs> nothing. Finish it. Just nothing. Dying. Just SpongeBob Boys noises. <laughs> um, <laughs> very SpongeBob Boys making very SpongeBob noise. Yeah. So, so anyway, it's it's now a Plankton versus Gary episode. The thing that nobody wanted, yeah. and I don't want, and I had to watch. And Plankton disguises as a salesman, and he like, oh, you know, he opens the door and he goes, "Uh, hey, hey, little snail, is your SpongeBob? I mean, your master home? Uh, maybe you would care for some of these snail-related products like shell polish and slime deodorant." Um, anyway, Gary fucking beats the shit out of him and slams the door on his <laughs> leg and the disguise fall like the leg uh, of plankton's disguise like is severed by the door and plankton shouts my You're leg fucking kidding no me. he didn't i'm not because why Lawrence would i not be the my leg guy, I am. the thing is a leg being severed by a door being closed and then my leg goes saying my leg 
happened it literally already happened. last episode in uh, yeah. fucking one of the ones that I watched. Well, the thing is, yours made less sense because, like, that was his actual leg. This was at least Plankton wearing a fake body because he's like a giant, he's like a, a Vincent adult man from Bojack Horseman and at least, in a disguise. And at least Gary slammed the door. Fred somehow cut off his own leg with the door. So anyway, uh, that doesn't work, and Plankton comes back with a new disguise. He's a Girl Scout now. G- get it? Because it's not a joke. It doesn't everything. have any. It doesn't have any setup or punchline. <laughs> everything breaks out. Anyway, he goes in, and uh, it, just in order to kill another minute, he explains all the different cookies, um, of and then. And then he's sitting there on the couch, and he's like, "Anyway, do you do you want the?" the and then he goes, "Wait a minute!" And the cookie, in, in like he is outside with his cookies. The couch was just moved out of the house, and Gary kind of like snickers and closes the door. I want to shit blood after this. So <laughs> I'm gonna shit. Sh- Sexy of you. I'm gonna shit blood and bleed shit anyway. <laughs> blood then, so blood fire. You'll so be funny, laughing. You're laughing so hard, you're gonna be farting blood and blood and fart out of cargo shorts. So plankton, so plankton in frustration throws down the cookie box and it explodes Why? and his antennas fall Why? off again and he goes. Note to self, nitroglycerin is not a substitute for vanilla extract. Plankton, this is why why no one eats at your fucking restaurant. You make genuinely (laughs) inedible food, and you presumably had... You presumably had the recipe for those cookies. I don't think the formula will save you. So speaking of eating, uh, because the disguise has failed, Plankton disguises, decides to completely switch gears and eat his way into the pineapple through the walls. I mean, what that, the that, fuck? I guess a nematode is kind of similar to a plankton, so... Meh? Are nematodes real animals? Yeah. Yes, they are. Okay. They are. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little marine biology bonus. <laughs> You're welcome, audience. <laughs> so Plankton eats his way in, and Gary sees him and is like, oh, fuck, I gotta, you know, kill Plankton. And so he chases him, but Plankton jumps into Gary's litter box. No! And disguises himself as and, a turd. Disguises himself as a girl and so, who stinks good. Yeah. That's no, no, theme. so the thing is... The thing is, when Plankton ate his way in, he's like, oh, I remembered I hate pineapple. But then he eats a little bit of the litter, and he's like, huh, this tastes better than pineapple. I love the taste of shit on Plankton. This is why I can't cook. Hi, I eat shit. <laughs> Come to my restaurant. Yeah, no, I remember that, that Mr. Lawrence clip. Yeah. Where, like, oh, it's just a bunch of shit. Yeah. It's completely inedible. I cannot serve this to, I cannot serve this to anyone. <laughs> Bad, bad food sells burgers, crabs. <laughs> bad food <laughs> sells burgers. His burgers are inedible, but mine are ten times worse. We're basically selling charcoal on a bun. Big Top Burger <laughs> kind of feels like a like a successor for what OG SpongeBob was. Yeah, being able yeah, to bring some of the bit, ideas and like kind of oddball comedy of SpongeBob to the modern era without. The atrocities. Fuck yeah. It. This is the episode of SpongeBob where we, SpongeBob Boys, where we just link everything in the description. Yeah, go watch much. anything but this. Go look at that that handy list that Gus made in the Velma video yeah. with such great things <laughs> as Big Man, Legend of the Myth, and. <laughs> my fr- my personal favorite is Can of Tuna and Smungon Bugulus. <laughs> oh yeah, Smungon Bugulus is such a good movie. It's a very underrated film. My favorite film. is Scorsese. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. It's better than Goncharov. <laughs> it is better than Goncharov. I'll say it. I always thought Goncharov was overrated, I honestly. I mean, Goncharov's not even exactly. properly a, a Scorsese movie. It was directed by Matteo... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The th- the thing is like the thing is I would appreciate Goncharov more because it's about like the Sicilians and in my no 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 no, 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 it's about the Naples, it's Sicily. about Russians making inroads into the Naples mafia. Oh, okay, sorry. The casting confuses me because there was some he's like De Niro, Sicilian actors Pacino, who were in yeah. it. Yeah, De Niro, Pacino. Yeah. Uh, All right. It's, you know, they're, How does Plankton escape shit city? <laughs> Let's find out. So Plankton. 
Plankton has outwitted Gary. He went into the shit place, which is the last place that Gary would look. So now he's just wrecking the house. He's just tearing up the house and, like, you know, overturning, like, pots. He swings, like, the fish hook from SpongeBob's, like, lure on his wall into SpongeBob's chair. And it, like, pops and flies away. And... He, like, keeps going, like, oh, I, I'll find that formula. You can't fool me. I went to college! He emphatically says, even though this is the sister episode to Salsa and Basilicus. Yeah, maybe that's the college he's referring to. He went to Sandy's highly unethical idiot college. Henry's coddling. Yeah, it was all, it was all a big, like, it was all a big, like, uh, uh, continuity retcon. Because it's, the truth is, Plankton did go to college, but he went to, like, PragerU. <laughs> Oh, he's here to teach us about the free market. I watched a couple YouTube videos from a channel that was funded by the Koch brothers. Yes. <laughs> and now I know everything that I need I've to know about running a business. got a degree from the School of Hard Knocks. And I yeah. work at none of your business. I, yeah. I got a degree from the School of Hard Cocks. <laughs> anyway. So, so anyway, uh, Plankton is We're Plankton is going through every room in the house, except for, suspiciously, uh, he doesn't go into the Spongebob library, which is such a shame. Yeah, he, he doesn't go into the room when that shows up. Krabby Patty formula stored inside. So anyway, uh, he's tearing up the house. Uh, Gary realizes this, and when Gary, like, like catches on, uh, one of Gary's eyes unscrews itself from the eye stalk and floats up and becomes a light bulb? Naturally, naturally. Yeah. That is one of his well-known abilities. The light bulb lights up, and Gary goes, Oh! Plankton's in the house! I gotta kill him! So... <laughs> Uh, because that's, the people under that's, the stairs, that's what this is. In a gimp suit with a shotgun and yeah. just chasing Plankton around. That's what this is. This is ultimately like a death battle between Plankton and Gary. Because after he finds out that Plankton's in the house, he home alones him and like puts him through a Rube Goldberg machine. <gasps> Rube Goldberg machine. <laughs> it it ends not with decapitation, as one might hope, but Plankton being like uh, rolled on a bowling ball into a bunch of you know those like stock anemone potted plants yes. Yes. that are in like the backgrounds of SpongeBob. He like hits a bunch of those, and they like like he gets like a strike, and they're like all like scattered, and then a Roomba comes out and vacuums up Plankton, and then spits him out so again. Roombas so Plankton now has it in rough. The SpongeBob universe, of course. Yeah. Like the technology of the SpongeBob universe is always about like 10, 20 years behind the rest of the world. So. Fair. Like, it's not like The Simpsons, where Homer's now a fucking nineties kid. Like SpongeBob stays in its time yeah, period. Yeah, Bart, Bart Simpson flosses now. It's uncomfortable. Dave White Homer. Dave White Homer. Exactly. So so anyway. Um, Plankton, like, squares up. He's like, all right, you want to go, Snail? We're gonna, we're gonna do this. And it's Gary just starts, B Gary starts wailing on him with his eye stalks, just pummeling Plankton into submission. So Plankton, in order to retreat, he goes into Gary's shell. Go Why? in. Go in. Go in. He goes. <laughs> he goes. He goes. <laughs> he goes. Knowing about that feels like having, like, sacred texts yes. that were, like, burned. Yes. <laughs> We are referencing a comic so anyway, that was destroyed in the Tumblr porn band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, you're right. You're right. So anyway, um, Plank is inside of Gary, which, which, because of the like random assortment of like weird toys and objects that are inside of Gary's shell, feels like feels like a remnant back to the Tumblr porn band. Yeah. And so Plankton is like wandering around. And he's like, "Oh, this this place is terrifying." And Gary's eye starts chasing him. A, a little Gary in a chair appears and is like, welcome to my mind, and punches him and he explodes. No, it's got to be that, like, <laughs> that, like, fancy Gary, the, like, really tall yeah. one that's, like, a Gary as a no, head. No, no, no. It's even weirder because Gary's eye stalk starts chasing him. Like, Gary puts his eye stalk into his own sh uh, shell and then Plankton keeps running and he's suddenly in some kind of, like, weird acid trip dimension. Like, he runs on a Mobius strip and oh, then strip, from said. there he ends up being on, like, a, like, like an ancient eldritch sunken city, like a relay inside of, like, um... Uh, Gary's mind. This feels like the random, like, pink elephant sequence at the end of One Trick Sponge from last time. Yeah! No, it is a little bit like that. It is a little this bit like that. So, so anyway... Smoked weed, guys. Yeah, I'm I'm, so this is why I dissuaded you. SpongeBob gets home. He sees that the house is completely destroyed. He notices, like, a series of artifacts. Like, he sees his first Krabby Patty that he got caramelized is shattered on the floor, and he's like, oh, my first Krabby Patty, I was gonna get that, uh, I was gonna, like, you know, give that to my grandchildren. 
No, he got it caramelized. The thing that doesn't make sense about his first Krabby Patty being in his house is presumably he served it to a customer. Yeah. Do you remember that awful episode that I think Mr. Enter went off on one about? Where, where he's like, like in love with the Krabby yeah, Patty? Yeah, and it's just getting increasingly like rancid over the course of an episode. Yeah, filthy. So then uh, Spongebob also sees that his Mermaid Man underwear has been torn up, and he's like, oh, I could have worn that at least a thousand more times. Um, he also notices his glass of water is on the ground, because rule of threes, the last one has to be like a goofy. Yeah. He's like, my glass of water, I was going to drink that. And is, is that the one that Party he har-har. seems the most like devastated about? Yeah. Yep. Paradoxically. Uh-huh. P- he sees that Gary <laughs> has got his eye stalk like, basically like up his own asshole. And, and, like, is struggling. Like, I would be like too Gary's, like, situation. sitting there, like... You would be Mr. Struggle. This is a struggle episode. So, so Gary's, like, sitting there, and SpongeBob goes, like, okay, what's going on? And, like, Gary's eye pops back out. And he's like, I'm going to take you to the vet. This, is, this seems odd and strange. Meanwhile, we cut back to Plankton inside, and Plankton is in, like, a nightmare... Still in the nightmare realm. And he's like, oh, but the eye stock's gone. I lost him. And then he falls into an Uzumaki spiral. Wow. <laughs> and uh, he he ends up at the center of the shell where a piece of paper is. And, um, oh, one, one detail I forgot. Sorry. SpongeBob, uh, like, he pointed out that the formula was just sitting on top of the TV the entire time. So, like, Plankton just missed it. Fucking idiot. Mr. Krabs was right, maybe. Yeah, Plankton's incapable of abstract thoughts. He cannot ruminate. He cannot divine the hypothesis. He is a tired clown. <laughs> this just sounds like something you would say, Gus. I mean, it feels like, yeah, it, it feels like we start every episode with, like, what up, tired clowns? Welcome back to SpongeBob Boy. You want to ruminate? You want to you want to ruminate the hypothesis? You fucking idiots! Because if you're this far in, you are a tired clown. Yeah. I feel like a, ty- a tired. I'm fucking clown. bozo right now, yeah, we're fucking... and I'm taking a fat yeah, L. Yeah, you're fucking, you're fucking big <laughs> honk, wow. honk. Hi, honk, bingo. honk. Hi, bingo. Hi, bingo. I'm bingo. Bingo the clown. Bingo the clown. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're, we're, we're ramping up towards the finale because Plankton, uh, despite the fact that we know the formula is not in Gary's shell, he finds a piece of paper and he's like, this must be the formula. And he grabs this piece of paper Wait, and he's like, he opens the picture, the, the paper up and it's dick butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Referencing dick butt in 2023? See, it's, More it, likely than you think. It's been long enough that that has become like hilarious again yeah. god all you kids out there don't know dick butt <laughs> google dick butt but not if you're underage dick butt is one of the funniest yeah. shit posts ever created by anyone the thing is you'd only know dick butt if you're overage yeah who's this dick butt customer <laughs> who is this dick butt fellow anyway anyway Plankton, Plankton sees the heavenly light shine down on him. He's like, oh, yes, that's what I always thought. The heavenly light would shine down upon me when I found the formula. Uh, turns out that they're at the vet, and the vet has opened a, the, the, the snail shell, and we find that Plankton has been, like, hallucinating because he's, like, the snail fumes have made him trip out, and what he's holding is one of SpongeBob's old shopping lists. Yeah, like like Meg said, are we are we introducing snail fumes to as a world, and they're hallucinogenic too. Yeah, I don't know. So like the doctor, the doctor then like just goes like, yeah, he wouldn't be having this problem uh, if he had a nose like the rest of us. And then the doctor sniffs uh, in deep, which I actually don't get at all. And also, it's just like okay, so we just have to make the doctor nose racist for some reason. <laughs> And I just remembered something that happens in my episode. You just reminded me of something, guys. What was it? In my episode, there's like this, like, um, while uh, Patrick is like sh- slumping around town as the, fi- well, as uh, the, the, the filthy monk is kind of slumping around town and scaring everybody away with his stink, there's like this, this like kind of Dick Tracy looking guy that's walking around and he's got like a big red, like, um, like he, he looks like a Cuphead character or something. He's very like, like old Looney Tunes looking character and he's just like my schnozzle <laughs> What a weird thing to occur. Yeah. My schnozzle <laughs> 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 
So it ends with Plankton running off into the horizon, uh, hallucinating with the shopping list, and he's like, "Ah, oh, Karen, throw throw on the throw on the." The pastrami, it's time for the fucking... I don't remember what he says, but he says that he's like, Daddy's brought home the bacon, and he's really happy about it, and that's the end of the episode. You not need to know that Plankton calls himself Daddy. Thank you yeah. so much, that's horrible. <laughs> that's canon. So, Meg, how was your uh, first experience with Spongebob Boys? Um, I, is that what my name is? <laughs> but I feel yeah. like I don't know. I feel like I've experienced ego death. So I guess, I guess my second question would be, would you be interested in coming back for another one? Absolutely not. Never. Never in my life. So we hope you, you've you enjoyed the Meg special of Oh, Spemba, Billy. Spemba, Billy. And as always, you were not fucking ready.